to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment. You must have a hunger for light. You must have a resentment for ignorance. You must have such, such a resentment for ignorance. We travel around and I look at people outside. And I see how people are victims of what they don't know. You watch people all around. Victims of what they don't know. You can see a woman sit down and, and please don't feel bad. I, I mean, see people trying to maybe fry yam or do something and, and you see that they are doing the best they know with the information they think they have. They never can know that life can be better. You see a lot of pastors, well-meaning and sincere people, but victims of darkness, victims of ignorance. And I made up my mind that in my life, I will be a bank of illumination. It's an assignment. It's a project I gave myself. That I will surround myself with mysteries like chariots. That on the strength of those mysteries, you will dominate. I've been meditating on this scripture. It says, arise. Brothers and sisters, when the Bible tells you to arise, it means access has been given to that light. Arise. Arise. Shine for your light is come the glory of the lord is risen upon you verse 2 we're headed for verse 3 but let's just look at verse 2 media help us verse 2 it says for behold see darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness the people he said but the lord shall arise upon you and his glory shall be seen on you. Now this is the part, the part that blesses me so much. Verse 3. Ah, Kabbalah. Da, da. I receive it for my life. Every time I see this scripture, I know that I will never fail in life. I'm telling you. It's like, it's like you have found a jackpot. He said, Gentiles shall come. Gentiles shall come to what? I learned early in life that if you see people coming to you, nine out of every ten are not coming for you they are coming for what you represent and what you carry the day you let what you carry sleep you get set for empty pews are we together now let me tell you the truth you see most preachers just think people like them they say my members love me <laughs> pray for them and let them not be healed for one month and they will show you that yes they love you but they love themselves more It says, and the Gentiles, brothers and sisters, something about your life will make Gentiles come. They will give every kind of excuse. People will say, but do you know it's not your tribe? While they are criticizing you, they are still coming. You know why? Because you see, brothers and sisters, let me tell you something about illumination. Illumination is not a gift. It's a price. It's, it's, not, it's an endangered commodity. You don't find illumination on the ground. There are not many people who are really enlightened. And when you really are enlightened, the Bible says Gentiles. It's a force. It can't be stopped. Gentiles shall come to your light. And this is the part that is even greater. It says they are kings. See, their kings don't come to your light because they are arrogant people. The kings believe they have light too. They too have some level of result. So your initial light will not impress them. It will impress the poor. It will impress the sick. But the kings will say we are watching. The queen of Sheba heard about Solomon. But it was not enough for her to come. But as the news kept resounding, a time came she could not deny it. And she carried her bounties. Up she came. 
See, let me tell you, there are people in your life right now. It's not like they are not seeing you. Your light is not yet notable, but they are watching. They are paying attention to the transitions that are happening. They are watching your church. They pretend like they didn't hear the testimony. But they need what you carry, but it's not yet impressive. When you continue, a day will come. Look at what happened. Do you know that the scribes, the centurion, they had been following Jesus in secret. And one night, John chapter 3, one of them just came and said, Master, look, forget the fact that we insult you. We know, we know you are a man sent from God. Is it not in your Bible? They said, see, there is nothing as powerful as light. Men can argue it in the day, brothers and sisters. But time, when you become consistent, it says they are kings to the brightness. One result after another. You see, let me tell you, consistency is a sign of mastery. Anything you can, any result that is short-lived in your life was a guesswork. It was not founded upon truth. It was founded upon luck. Any dimension, listen to me very importantly. Any dimension of result you had seen in your life before and you cannot get it again. It didn't happen on the strength and is dangerous. Let me tell you what deceives us. Sometimes you are, I've taught you about prophetic atmospheres. You can come into a man's prophetic atmosphere and leverage on his secret place with God and temporarily it will activate some results in your life that makes you think it was your personal altar that brought it. And so you will stop contending because in that atmosphere some things happen. You will now go back and find out you are left with your own atmosphere and your own growth and you will not be able to lift it this is what happens a man of god can come for a program and come with his own depth of spiritual reality and the strings of covenants he has with god and you find out that momentarily that church can experience growth but the man of god will now think is just a new level he's not learned the spiritual keys that really bring growth are we together now and so after a while he will find out that the truth about the state of the church is revealed. Gentiles shall come to your light. They are kings to the brightness of your rising. Gentiles. I want it to, it looks very simple, but I want it to be buried into your head. That brothers and sisters, your escape from life is your access to light. The day you find it, start jumping. I don't care what is before you. Just start rejoicing because you are out forever. Light. Light. It says, they that sat in darkness, they have seen a great light. Illumination. Let me tell you what illumination is. Reading your Bible does not mean you have illumination. Cramming scriptures and being able to quote them out is not illumination. Are we together now? See, one of the challenges with the body of Christ is you hear me quote scriptures and it's easy for you to think because I'm quoting them. You don't have to be a child of God to be able to quote scripture. The concept of memory is a psychological thing. Anybody can learn it. We teach children to recite memory verse. Abi, Sunday school. John chapter 1 verse 1. In the beginning. And the child is saying it just like, like a robot. You think that child is enlightened? Of course, he's on his way to, en to enlightenment. But it's not enlightened. Many of us are frustrated because we think we have accumulated a lot of scriptures. And we think on the strength of those scriptures because we can speak them out. It means we are illuminated. No. You are only illuminated when understanding comes. When you can draw out the mysteries and the principles behind the scripture, illumination has come for you. Otherwise, everything you have is just the letter. And the Bible says it can kill. Learn this. It's not just because you found it in the Bible. Where it was written, by his stripes I am healed. 
and you say oh i found it in the name of jesus lord this is your word hold on you think you have gotten illumination are you seeing why we don't get results although we are holding scripture it's unable to the bible says that we can make the word of god of non-effect there is a technology that breaks the word of god and releases the life therein that's what we call illumination two men we're going with Jesus to Emmaus. You've read that scripture. And the Bible says Jesus, the living word, the resurrected Christ was with them. They were discussing with him, but their eyes were closed. A man can be around Bible, around church, around revelation. You are listening to several messages, but until your eyes are open, you will never have illumination. And the danger is that your familiarity with scripture will convince you to think you have illumination, but your results will show that you've not gotten it, and it will frustrate you. That's the situation with many of us here. So you are spending time reading your Bible, which is good, but there is no illumination. Let me tell you how you will know. You can measure darkness in your life. Start looking at every area of your life one by one. The result there is a direct reflection of your access to light or otherwise. You will have to be very humble to admit what I'm telling you. Hallelujah. Gentiles will come to your light. Your assignment is not to run around chasing people, looking for favor. No. The reason why we are the ones running around people is because we do not have light. The Bible says Gentiles shall come to your light. They are kings to the brightness of your rising. If you want to come out of the situations that surround your life, the first key is light. The first key is illumination. There is something you do not know right now that is responsible for the quality of your life. Are we, are we together? Please listen. Are we together? There is something you don't know right now. There is something you can know that will change your life forever. I sit down and I look at what the Lord has shown me now. And I look at what I used to know four, five, six years ago years ago and i cannot imagine that i was comfortable and even preaching at that level of ignorance between the last one year of my life i can turn back and see very clear evidences of ignorance beyond my imagination i would have argued with you if you told me that there were so many things i didn't know amazing there are many of us who are convincing ourselves right now that we are so enlightened but your life is betraying that conviction and so it's time to settle down and ask yourself very sincerely do i have light or do i just have the letter do i have light write this word down the mysteries of the kingdom I'm giving you a key to the prayer you may have been praying. The fast. If you're not interested in hearing what I'm saying, then forget, forget about a solution. Forget about results in your life. I really want you to get results. I really pray that we'll all get results. The mysteries of the kingdom. I've taught it here again and again that a mystery is a secret truth. A mystery is like a code of operation. A code of operation. A secret code of operation. In the kingdom, men reign on the strength of the mysteries they have come to understand and apply write those two words understanding and application these are the two things that make the word of god profit you understanding and application in all you're getting it says get understanding 
Wisdom tells you what to do. Understanding tells you how to do it. Wisdom tells you it is good to tithe. Understanding tells you how to tithe. That you don't just carry money and just come and drop like a bribe. The Bible says, honor the Lord, not give to the Lord. When it comes to tithing, your attitude is as important as the substance you are holding. Are we together now? So the Bible teaches us that it has been given unto us. Say it has been given to me. Please say it, personalize it. It has been given to me to know the mysteries of the kingdom. Brothers and sisters, if what I'm telling you enters your spirit and you take it seriously, you will get up and walk. You will, in, within a month, the results you will produce within a month will dwarf what you've had for many years. Please believe me. Anybody who is not ready to sit down and understand the mysteries of the kingdom is a man that cannot be helped. I run away from people who do not have passion for understanding the word. They are dangerous. I rather stay with I rather stay with a herbalist. A herbalist is more friendly, at least he's passionate about something, than than a careless person who has no passion. His ignorance will affect you. Don't forget, people have atmospheres. Right? The same way you contact sickness just by coming close to somebody and we say it's a communicable disease. What do you know about kingdom wealth? And who taught you? What do you know? What is your guarantee for a blessed life? I think I'm fine. You are joking. You are really joking. I went to school. You are joking two times. I'm very serious. I mean, jokes apart. I'm really serious this night. What do you know that will make you excel in ministry? I'm a man of God. They laid hands on me. You are really joking. What do you think will bring a crowd to your church? I'm probing, I'm showing you all the areas when I, where it's like a call and response. When I mention the area, tell me the mystery you know that supports your confidence that you will excel in that area. And you will see how we are moving with rings of ignorance. We are just hoping we know. Can you tell me what you think will make you remain in the next 20 years? What if somebody is calling your name to die tomorrow? I come for koinonia. God knows my heart is open. What else? See, I'm opening us up to see the need for strategic knowledge. You see, another mistake is many believers go for knowledge, but our knowledge is not strategic, it's not applicable. It's like a student who maybe got medicine. And he can sit down and say, I think I want to attend a, an architecture lecture. And he goes there. And then next tomorrow, he's in theater art. He's taking lectures, but it's not strategic. It's not constructive. At the end, he will never become a doctor. So many of us are puffed up by several messages we have listened to. You gather the message of anybody abroad, anything new, you just put them together. You swallow them like a drug and say, Satan, come and try me. And he says, you are still the same. Let me tell the truth. You have not changed. I don't want to waste my time gathering revelations and informations that sustain no power to produce results in my life and the life of others do you know the danger especially as a leader pastors hear this you see when people come they submit to your tutelage this is the danger so if while you are ignorance they keep drinking from that ignorance until the day god delivers you and you will hope that they are around when he delivers you so you can tell them look i've been misleading you here's the correction what if you are not there they travel with that ignorance start their own churches too and the ignorance spreads Hallelujah. There is something Bishop Oyedeko knows that we do not know. There is something he has handled that is producing the results. Are we together? Oh, he's just lucky. He had an 18-hour vision. Wait until he tells you the processes that led to that thing. That encounter. 
I want you to be tired of lack of results in your life. We don't serve God for results, but you are frustrated when there is no result in your life. In every area of your life. So what gives you confidence that you are not going to die? Many people have said I will not die and they died. So think quietly. What gives you confidence that you are not going to die? Bold face does nothing to Satan. I won't die. What gives you confidence that you will remain in hell? Oh, by his stripes I am healed. You ask how many people keep quoting this thing as they keep coughing out blood till they die. I'm, I'm challenging you. Is God speaking to us? What gives you confidence, brothers and sisters, that you will get up and travel and come back safe? The Bible never hid it from us that there are arrows that fly by day. He never said they flew once, they won't fly. They are constantly flying, even now. The Bible calls certain things a noisome pestilence. Right? He said, not the destruction that wasted by noonday. It tells you a thousand shall fall. So there are so many people falling. Brothers and sisters, it's time for us to probe whether what we have is true light. Or just shadows of realities. What gives you a guarantee that you are going to get a job? Did you know that two, for instance, out of every maybe 10 or 20 graduates get jobs within their first five years of graduation? There are many first class students, two one students, two two students from prestigious universities who are still waiting, joining the queue. Even if they give 1,000 jobs in a parastatal, there are other people who even have other advantages. They have uncles and aunties. You, you don't have anybody. So, by default, you are disadvantaged. What gives you an edge? What makes you think you are going to rise? Is God speaking to us tonight? Illumination. There are many pastors who give excuses. Oh, our church is not growing because the location is not, it's not very, the, the, the location is, is in a wilderness. Is that true? Is that true? Look what is happening to many families. We are victims of the arsenals of darkness. Anybody can die anyhow, any day. Anything can happen to anybody anyhow, any day. But he says, you will arise and shine. Oh, I respect the word of God. I not only believe it, I respect it. I found my way. My only confidence in life is on the strength. God took his integrity and put it to be released only when the word is understood. Listen, what you don't understand is the same thing as not having it. If I have... Can you help me with this camera? I, I won't touch it. Just show me where I shouldn't touch. Where oh, I shouldn't touch here. All right. Can I hold this here? Is it okay? Look at this. This is a wonderful gadget. Are we together? Please, Pastor Femi, come. Come, just stand by my side. This is a camera. Is that true? He doesn't have any. Now, if I say who is better, I know you will say me. Because I'm holding one. I'm, I'm showing you cameras all around. And then you ask me, show me the pictures. And I say, look, forget about pictures. I have a camera. Are you not seeing it? No, no, no. Listen, listen. The goal of this camera is to snap pictures you can see. And I've been holding this camera for a long time. I'm even laughing at this guy. And say, you are standing no camera. We'll see where the pictures will come from. And you are holding this. There are no pictures. Are you seeing that? Who is truly better? I think he's this guy because he's in a point where he even knows he does not have. So his breakthrough can be faster. You, you think you have. If someone else comes with camera too, you say we are colleagues because you are holding camera. You see what deceives a lot of people. Uh, the moment they hear a man of God, share, they say we are also we are fellow pastors in this vineyard. We know what we are doing and they will never sit down to learn. 
The woman with the issue of blood said, look, I, I know I have a problem. I'm not guessing. But the scribes will come for Jesus' meetings. They will come as contemporaries. When he's speaking, they'll be nodding. He knows the law. And they remain there in darkness. And there were other sinners who would come and receive. This is the problem with the church. We think because we have scriptures. The moment I say Isaiah 6, he say, oh, arise, shine. That's where he's going. But has it produced results? Has it produced results? This gentleman is holding a camera. Do you know his camera can even be better than this one? Yet it's not producing results. No understanding. Let me tell you, lack of understanding is as bad as ignorance. You can have knowledge and it can be wasteful if there is no understanding. Yeah. Thank you. The more I know God, the more I see how predictable this life can be. Listen, the more I know the ways of God, the more I see how predictable a man's destiny can be. As scattered and haphazard as it looks, there is a spiritual rhythm. Light can show you the path. It says, thy word, O Lord, is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. I'd like you to shout it after me. I'm tired of confusion in my life. Say, I'm tired of guessing in my life. That you are faced with challenges. And then you say, I think this is the key. You now try it. It doesn't work. You now go back. Do you know that certain challenges cannot give you a long time to keep guessing? If you don't get it once, it can destroy you. There is somebody out to destroy you in your village. And that person's destruction is only at the mercy of what you know that can bail you out. Your ignorance, if you allow it too long, you may be caught up in that tragedy. Are we together? This is what I tell myself all the time. Joshua Selman, you must get rid of ignorance and confusion in your life. And the key is the word of God. Listen, listen, listen. No other, no other instrument can give you true light outside the word of God. Make no mistakes about it. I've read a lot of books. I've read psychology books. I've read business books. I've read all kinds of things. Any principle or thought that is not consistent with the word of God is going to add to your confusion and ultimately waste your life. Because there are people who are trying to get enlightenment outside the world. The Bible calls their light darkness. Are we together now? I, I see a lot of people teach and talk and is even stepping into the church. Whenever we are teaching certain things, especially about success, we, we push the word of God out and we say, just leave Bible. This one, we are now talking common sense. Anything outside the word of God is going to confuse your life. What is contained in this word? Mysteries. Mysteries. Keys. Kabbalah Tayada. Keys that open doors. These are ancient keys, brothers and sisters. Those, see, there is no door in your life that has not been opened by somebody before. The Bible lists them in Hebrews chapter 11. Men who had these keys and did so many great things. Knowledge. Say it again. I'm tired of guessing. I'm tired of guessing. I'm tired of guessing. We're guessing over our finances. We're guessing over ministry. We're guessing over the anointing. I think I'm anointed. No, you are not. If you're anointed, there should be an evidence. If there is no evidence, you are not. Calm down and look for the keys. Hallelujah. If what happened to you last year remains with you this year, then it's your fault. We must contend for light. Everybody say, there is a light that can deliver me. Everybody say, there is a key that can open that door. Brothers and sisters, there is no door that is made without a key. But every door is at the mercy of the key. He said, I have given to, it's been given to you to know the mysteries. The mysteries of the kingdom. 
what keeps you in divine health look at sicknesses flying all around you enter a restaurant you don't even know where they got the water from and you are eating and you are happy and you are running around and you want to live long right now there are all kinds of documentaries that almost call everything bad i saw one that said microwave causes cancer for god's sake me that has to microwave food almost every day so that means i'm going to die young what do you understand by the life of god when the bible says great is the mystery of godliness that god can dwell in a man have you caught the his the the revelation of that truth that god can dwell in a man that god can dwell in a man let's take our finances for instance at least this concerns us what do you know about your finances or are you hoping that one day you will be blessed that's a costly hope sister do you have any shorty that a man is going to come and carry you believe me if all you have is that i'm fine or i'm in a place where there are gentlemen you are joking see let me tell you something knowledge truly kills fear uh, stand up pastor femi stand up promise watch these guys please sit down sit down were you afraid of sitting did you turn back to even check you know why because they are sitting based on an enlightenment they know what this chair can do are we together now they know that this chair can take their weight they are not thinking about it i'm not holding this mic wondering if it will shock me i don't expect it to are we together now i'm not holding this trusting it to scatter no 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 this guy is not playing this keyboard hoping that the sound will just stop he knows he should continue because he's playing it with knowledge i gave an example last year i think when i was teaching i don't know if he was here or another meeting if i call somebody who cannot play this keyboard and i say sit down look how wonderful what he's playing is are we together now that person who doesn't know how to play keyboard cameraman come uh, do you know how to play keyboard don't waste our time come all right mike please stand up quickly just do whatever you think you know to do quickly one minute now let's see look at me how many of you know that this keyboard is absolutely obedient it will produce any sound now play anything go ahead you may be making sense go ahead all right watch this now this guy thinks the problem is the keyboard are we together now because he doesn't believe anything is wrong with him ah why are these keys not doing why are they not playing like this the problem is never the keyboard the keyboard was designed to be played but it has rules there is a rhythm you see the keys black white everything scattered all right okay thank you thank you go and do your job <laughs> all right so mike play please play something same keyboard same church same ministry same business same academics same nigeria play go ahead anything same keyboard that guy said his government that guy said is 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 nigeria that is not giving job that guy says machines that cause cancer i mean look at this listen the bible now watch this when everybody's in a pool of ignorance and one person stands out what do you think will happen the world was designed to not ignore spectacular things it's impossible for a thing to be spectacular and not draw attention are we together now is your life spectacular enough to draw everyone including your destiny helpers those who can say look benga come and take five plots of land I just want you to be around me because there is a testimony that you carry something that is notable my goodness life will become so cheap for you when you pay the price to carry light you see 
access to illumination is truly a sign of god's love because not everyone listen not everyone will have the opportunity to go to school not everyone will have the opportunity to learn english not everyone will have the opportunity to be born by rich parents but everybody can have access to illumination and brothers and sisters when you find it it will change your life forever i kept thinking about this really and i was telling myself oh god can you make the lives of your people so predictable absolutely predictable absolutely predictable see one of the one of the indices for measuring favor is is um the bible calls it it says you will be a delightsome land people like to be around you because they have a track record that something happens to them every time they are close to you i like getting close to the ma welfare mama because something happens to me every time are we together now? <laughs> Who is seeking you for what you carry is it not surprising you that you are a nuisance to everybody around you they started it quietly but now they are open about it everybody is telling you you are really a nuisance to me pastors who is seeking you who calls your phone and will not mind calling it hundred times because he knows that if you pick his problem dies Who is willing to pick your call? That even if you say, I don't have credit, say, no problem. Me, I have money. It's, it's, I need light. They sought for Jesus to a point that people tore zinc. They knew they could negotiate with the owner of the house later on. Who has been that desperate about your grace? Who has coveted your anointing so bad they can pay anything for it? Light. Who has defended you in the presence of your enemies because of the degree of impact you have made in his life? And the person has said, I will never hear anybody talk against Sam. What Sam has done to my life, even when they are right, I will fight them. Hi. See, brothers and sisters, there are cheap pathways you can find in this scripture. And bail yourself out of this wicked world. Everyone say illumination. Say understanding. There is something we all do not know. That is responsible for where we are. The problem is we are too arrogant to learn. We are too pompous to admit the fact that there is something we do not know how many young people brag around because they read one brand tracy book and they say i'm a financial expert you see that there is so much ignorance in our generation i'm speaking to people inside and outside so much ignorance in our generation spiritually every man of god believes him too he's a captain of his own even if there's no result and everybody comes and once you can join one scripture and just say i don't say it in a cynical way I know the things that are not in my life and I'm desperately pursuing them with every sense of humility and hunger. And even if it is one of our little ones here that have, it will not cost me anything to kneel down and say, show me the way. This is what we do not have. This is one thing I respect about this man of God. I'm sorry I have to use you, pastor. This is, this is, this is an elderly man. But the humility, this man has pursued me like, like I don't even know what to say. I was shocked seeing him. I said again, the day, I, the day he came over to my place and I was talking, I mean, these people eat my teaching in their church as if you will never be the same man of God. It's a law. You will never be the same. I know why many of you are not being changed, although you are in a place of tremendous change. Pride, familiarity. You do not discern. You do not discern. Please listen to me. The Bible says you don't discern the Lord's body. And for that reason, many are weak. Many are sick. 
Oh, I've had koinonia message activating breakthrough. Destiny, I've had it. I was even there. They used me as an example. And you think that letter is illumination. And somebody somewhere in one, one room made with mud will download it and say, Lord, I have found it. I have found the key. So destiny help us and be praying it. And the Holy Ghost will say, this is it. A woman came from Benway State. I think, I, I can't remember, last year or so. This woman came with her husband. They were pastors for many years. Yes, they had struggled. It's a terrible thing to be in ministry without any helper. You pay for everything by yourself. <laughs> when, when the woman, listen, when the woman, I don't know how, I think one, somebody here in, in Koinonia went there and gave her just that message. Activating breakthroughs, the ministry of destiny helpers. She received that message digested the message she said she listened to that message at least 20 or 25 times there are messages in my life i've listened to up to 1000 times one message god is my witness one message i'm a product of many anointings what are you a product of your world your rema your deception you keep moving around in confusion with no results Staring up expectations in people. Oh, I've come for this meeting. You will see what God will do. They say, we are watching. At the end of you, say, it's just that there's no time. Otherwise, you would have seen what God will do. It's a lie. There is time. There is time. Nothing will ever cover for lack of light. Not suit. Not good dressing. Not English. Not even Rema. It says, you, if you are not rising, your light has not come. It was designed to come and pick you from where you are. In your name, we will rise. I don't know. You reign on us. It's in your name, we will rise. I don't know. You reign on us. In your name. I listen to at least one koinonia message i know there are uncommon mysteries forget that it came through me i have learned many things from my messages than many messages i listen to it and i'm praying and when is the time when apostle is prophesying i kneel down and i lift my hands as he's speaking see listen you have to learn what i'm telling you because this year make up your mind not to cheat yourself see arrogance with no result is not leading it's it's like a man wearing suit with not even five naira is there he say it's just that i kept the money so no 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 i'm tired of lack of results there is a higher standard god is gauging me with god will not gauge me with the same standard he's gauging many of us because to whom much is given much is expected are we together now Thank God for all of the breakthroughs and the impartations. During my retreat for this year, I said any ministry I honor, we, it is like a rattling. We, you know how an earthquake is? Huh? An earthquake or a tsunami. That's what is going to happen in that church. Any ministry, including your church, man of God. My goodness. Yeah. To increase capacity. When you step in, you break chains. You shatter darkness. When you do that, for every ministration you go, there are 10 more waiting for you from it. You see that? Not the one that you just go and say, well, maybe the next one is September and you're just sitting. Of course, you don't use those things just as indices, but there is not enough fire. That's why. Because needs are still there. People suspect you have a track record of not producing results. So nobody's ready to invest in your anointing. 
Hallelujah. Please hear what I'm saying. What have you learned? What truth do you know that can bail you out? What do you know that can bail you out? If I give you a mic right now, I say, come, teach us one kingdom mystery you have learned. What will it be? What will it be? You see that many of you are just enjoying fellowship, but you are not really holding on to something. Kai, he said, I know whom I have believed. He said, I am persuaded. I've held on to these things. It was the apostle Peter that said, that which we have seen, that which we have heard, that which our hands have handled. You can't tell me I'm not holding this. No matter how you deceive me, I'm holding it. I can feel it. I have become one with that experience. What do you know about the anointing of the Holy Spirit? We keep talking about the ability of God working in a man. You jump at it, you fall under that anointing. But what do you know about it? What do you know about the anointing and getting a job? What do you know about the anointing and breakthrough in ministry? What have you learned? God asked me to pause with the series we'll start because some of us, what we need is not just a new message. What we need is getting back to say, look, I need to get this thing now. There are certain truths that I know and I will never waste my time in certain levels of ignorance. Every time I meet a wall before me, I know that there is an anointing I must invoke that will call a man. A man must appear for that door to open. So my prayer is very strategic and intentional. I don't pray stupid prayers. I pray with intelligence. Lord, where are the helpers? I call them. Because I know if a helper does not appear, that door will not open. And here comes the helper. Because I know how to call them. They never come on their own. They are always called. You have been waiting for them. You will wait forever. There is a mystery that calls helpers. Are you seeing that round? So our parents are waiting. God will send somebody to pay the rent. You will wait forever. There is a mystery. Brothers and sisters, please hear me. Am I challenging you tonight? I want you to get this thing. I love you. That's why you see me teach this. I want you to hold on to something. Don't hold on to shadows. We are in a hurry to teach. We are in a hurry to do ministry. When we should sit down and learn. I tell you the truth, I wish that I can just have a vacation of four or five months. Decembers are usually happy periods when we round up program because that two or three weeks where I don't have to teach anybody, I now go back to feed my spirit. I preach an average of two or three messages every week aside from school of ministry we are resuming. So there are so many things sucking out of me. Time is so limited for me. But many of us have everything. All the messages are there with the testimonies. Do you know you can sit down crying in a room and the light to liberate you is in a message lying down there and the angels are standing close to you and say, activate us. What is all this? What do you need to learn again? And you call your uncle. He says, I won't pick. And you are there helpless. And the angels are saying, what is uncle? We are here. What is uncle? Have you not read in the Bible that strangers shall feed your flock? Which one is uncle again? But in your mind, according to what you know, if your uncle does not pick your call after two days, you are dead. Who told you? Aya. Have you not had the ravens brought bread for Elijah? Where did the ravens come from? Lack of light has limited us. Please hear what I'm saying. God can raise helpers for you. You have tied God. How many pastors sit down and say it's, it's, it's because we are young people, it's because we have not put balloon around the church, that's why people are not coming. No. And we get angry and fight ourselves and move in ignorance and, and, and we have protocol and PA, no power, no grace, no understanding, no results. The trouble is that they now invite us for programs and you see people writing our ignorance and they go back to go and practice it and come back shocked and confused. Lean and hungry. Say, I'm tired of guessing. Say it again. I don't know how to beg you and make you believe what I'm saying. I honor the Lord for what he's doing in this ministry. The crowds outside, the crowds inside. 
But brothers and sisters, hear me. And I say this with all humility. Never make a mistake to think it is guess. It can be reproduced anywhere. The same result. It was founded upon mysteries, not luck. Are we together? Yeah. Jesus went to the desert. The same crowds came. He went to the mountain. He went by the... The people, men and women, climbed the mountain, stayed there three days. He had to now say, let's feed them. Is God speaking to us? Who told you God cannot change your story? Who told you that God cannot lift you up? There is something you don't know. I'm talking especially to the sisters. This, our dependency mindset must die this year. This sitting down and hoping. Not, when is Valentine? Answer me, I'm not laughing. When is Valentine? Next, when, 14. Next week, Friday. Next week, Sunday. It's possible right now that many of us have expectations. And in our prayer, I'm not saying you are carnal, but you are just hoping that somebody will be the one to come and bail you out. Listen, this word will never profit you until the light breaks and the mystery behind it enters you. When you hold on to it, go to bed. You have entered your Sabbath. See, I don't care if at the time you are holding it, Bishop Oyedeko was there probably with one or two clothes, but when he caught that revelation, he said he shouted, I can never be poor. Can you say you can never be poor? Honestly. Can you say it? Me, I can say it, oh, my goodness. I wave poverty by, it waved me back. Deal done. Because for as long as there is one sick body, hmm, for as long as there is one life that must be changed, you see, there is something you can hold on to, brothers and sisters, that will wipe your tears. Look at Frank Edwards. He carried something he knew and sits upon that keyboard it, and bought cars with it and started an NGO with it. And his blessing lies with it. What have you been ignoring that is authorizing Satan in your life? What have you been ignoring that is stopping you from entering school? You are saying jam is hard. Keep quiet and think. What has been stopping you? I'm on my way to better days. I'm on my way to better days. Listen, let me tell you why I'm teaching you this. You see, my heart will bleed if we keep having people. I told you the Lord showed me that this year, Koinonia will be like a place of pilgrimage. I saw several people coming. It will be a painful thing to see pastors, businessmen come and giving testimonies and say, I just had three messages and it changed me. And all you do from now till December is to clap. Wow. Is it true? A miracle happened yesterday in a meeting. A lady who had a hole in her teeth, teeth supernaturally appeared before everybody. And the people were watching. I don't know what some of them thought I was. But let me tell you, with that kind of result, you will not be hungry. I promise you. Are we together? No, oh, no, no, no. Hunger, you and hunger will part away. You are not selling it. But somebody will be too grateful. And people were crying and just watching. And I sat down and I looked. I said, my goodness. When you catch this thing, ba, you have caught it. If it's not there, it's not there. Hallelujah. There's a particular university. There are currently doing an election of the vice chancellor and all of that i think you guys will bear me witness when we're coming and several people were calling me oh i'm going to come will it work How? i mean these are people distinguished personalities that on a good day if i knock their office they should arrest me and go and lock me but something there is something they need and god didn't put it outside me every useful thing is inside me wisdom anointing i love the lord you can never take it and leave me we must go together 
if you need it this body will enter a plane with it we will all go together that's why you should never 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 not be successful in your life shout it again i hate confusion, I hate confusion. see satan comes to you and manipulates your life he studies your ignorance and uses it as his tools he studies your ignorance he can create illusions out of your ignorance satan is not a fool he doesn't just run and come into your life he takes a track record he looks at the areas you don't know anything about or where you have not respected the authority of the word of god and so he can look at you and say, do you know that until they do arrange you for you on internet, a husband is not coming because he has studied and he has seen that you have not found out that light that male and female, he created them. That the Bible says, seek out of the book and read, none shall want her mate. He searches the bank of the word in you and does not find that mystery present. And he says, use this. And all of a sudden, you are a Christian, you love God, you are praying in tongues. But the next thing you now start going to join all kinds of useless groups because you are looking for a husband. And he takes advantage of you and he will bring a demon to your life and destroy you. You will marry in two months and suffer for the rest of your life because of ignorance. And you find out that in that one mistake, your ministry has been implicated. In that one mistake, your children have been implicated because they are going to grow under the atmosphere of a bad father. God is telling you this way. The authority over your life is saying this way. And people say submit. What have you ignored that is responsible for the strength of darkness in your life? I'm chasing after you no matter what I have to do for I need you more and more. I'm so aware of my ignorance. So I'm chasing after you. No matter what I have to do. Lord, I need you more and more. More and more. More and more. Listen. Listen. I want to challenge you, Koinonia. You have to be determined. Go back home tonight and write a list of all the major areas of your life where you truly know that you are not getting results. Humble yourself and pursue light. Are we together now? Are we together now? Forget about Valentine or whatever it is. Of course, celebrate it. God bless you. But I'm telling you this. If you want a happy day, February 14th, every day of your life, find out what has God said. Do I understand what is? Don't think what you think God said. You see that? You can assume it's like exams. Every student sits down, they say, start, and everybody's writing. And when you come out, the person will say, What was your answer? You say, Five. You say, My own was three. And two of them believe they are right. It's left for the lecturer. By the time you see zero, what does that mean? It means you were wrong. You say, Ah, but the man didn't mark my script. Well, you still got zero. Everybody who scored five got it. For you did your calculation and arrived at three, meaning you failed. You didn't get it well. It's up to you to adjust and say, no, no, no. I think I missed something. Or be arrogant and say, it's a bad man waiting for another man. Many of us never will admit that we are ignorant. It doesn't cost me anything. You, you don't know how I, whenever God tells me, son, I think you need to know more. There is a dimension of me you do not know here. And you have to correct it. I jump at it. I almost spend a vigil online searching for everything looking for any koinonia message that relates to that if god says son you like ladies this night be like him where are all those hot messages i preach on character be like him um, um the, uh, he heaven and hell realities of heaven and hell part one and two that's what i will listen to till tomorrow till it irons out that dimension in me you don't tremble at his word that's why we don't change. When you look at ministries and see the ministries that there is the anointing on their life, you see what is happening. You just sit down. You see, you will never preach people into running away from results. 
because you are not getting it if i am not getting results in my life right now and pastor femi is getting results and i try to trivialize what he's doing to make you consider him unserious i'm only joking because the truth is you have problems and do you know members know where to get answers oh yes they know where to get answers i told you was it last week or week before last that if i am an unbeliever when I'm sick, I promise you I'll go to Babalao. I wouldn't do it in the secret. All these go to the secret. I will do it openly. Let camera even follow me. I will go there. And then I will wait for the one person who will come to challenge me. And I will bring another person as sick as me. And say, I will kneel down and apologize to you if you heal him. Otherwise, go back home. As simple as that. Are we together? I foresee that a time will come. That thing will happen in church members will hold charm and come for service with it the moment they are talking before altar call somebody will stand up and say sir this guy bought for you this is the charm that brought it and i can throw it if you can prove it otherwise that's what happened between moses and pharaoh he had to take the rod and pharaoh said get out of this place you grew up you ate the food that this god ra brought now you are coming to destroy it and moses said i found someone higher nobody great nobody greater no nobody greater than you listen moses said as at that time i thought ra was the highest of the gods and so my allegiance but i found i found somebody in the wilderness and he called himself i am and he said that he's coming to show his sovereignty and when he swallowed up this and after nine ten plagues Pharaoh had to give up. Pastors, let's stop deceiving people. We know where we are telling the truth and where we are not telling the truth. We know where we have results and where we don't have results. Let's admit it and not explain. Creation is not waiting for the explanation of the sons of God. It's waiting for the manifestation. There are people who have traveled from far and come for this meeting now. Some of them have come desperate to receive something. Imagine if all these people traveled all the way and then they just go back like that. If you don't listen to what I'm telling you, brothers and sisters, you will be very frustrated in your Christian journey. Because the end of every assimilation of truth is that it produces a result for you. By the time you get up and go home, now you already know that every time you see your father misbehaving, you now know because you've received superior intelligence that this man is not acting on his own volition. He's been influenced by powers. You see, the devil can no longer use his habit to keep the spirit of anger in you because another light has delivered you. So when you come out from the place of prayer and he starts ranting like a beast, you know you already have superior intelligence and you find out that Satan was using that to keep the spirit of anger so he would destroy you. But now another light has delivered you. And then number two, you now know that he's not fighting with him physically and saying, Daddy, I will wound you. The moment he says that, you know where to go shake it take up a katana ba, ba, ba. and all of a sudden your father will see you and it's as if he's afraid there's something wrong but there are many of us you leave koinonia you come and you are fighting you slap your father you be why are you acting in ignorance is god speaking to us now have you not noticed how every time you are pressing into God, it looks like there are people all around you who can station themselves to do things that would destroy you. They are trying to fight something. Hallelujah. I pray for you in the name of Jesus Christ that light will give you peace, 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 peace. It will swallow away fear from your life and it will give you peace. When you have a revelation, for instance, hear me, that no human being, no man born of a woman can take your life. Not with enchantment. I can only imagine how many places my name has been called in different altars. Maybe when I'm traveling now, they now say die. It's difficult to kill me. I look just physical, but they that are with me, 
the mysteries that surround me are many many like you see obama you can just see him walking you try to shoot him before you leave the gun you are dead you don't know who was watching you you just know they shot you you didn't see anybody but a bullet entered you because what is more than what you are seeing koinonia hear me i want you to hold your bible please hold your bible inside and outside hold your bible say after me lord jesus this year i pray that the mysteries that would have to be opened for my destiny to change hidden in this word may they be open for me the mysteries of prosperity the mysteries of influence the mysteries of the anointing the mysteries of favor the mysteries of advancement the mysteries of breakthrough the mysteries of the anointing the mysteries of grace release it upon me oh god if god answers that prayer you'll be a wonder this year because it will surprise you it's not because there is nobody to give you the job there is something you have not done the earlier you admit it the faster and the better for you oh there's one guy that said i should just hold on when a job when there's job interview he will give me that's too costly you are living your life at the mercy of somebody if it now doesn't work you will hate the person why don't you live forget about all these things and wait upon god are we together now oh a lecturer promised me that this time around i will get a in my project what if that lecturer is sick and is not there during your defense then you fail woe to him that puts his strength in a man oh god said i'm going to enter the house how do you think you are going to enter the house just because you think you are earning fifty thousand, can fifty thousand give you a house you to ask yourself look at see this is how foolish i'm sorry to say it, but this is how foolish some of our parents are they they, they whenever they are, they are looking at their salary oh fifty thousand so let's calculate it will never work that way the devil will use it to destroy you one sickness will wipe away the budget and the devil will keep mocking us you've raised five hundred thousand one sickness will wipe it away but you can walk certain principles and a man will lack his sleep in the night and get up in the morning and say sorry i don't know who this person is but the lord has called me and said pastor alpha god has said i should change your story and you'll be sitting there dumbfounded and god will say you ask for it i said ask and you shall receive but the bible says that we not pray amiss mothers fathers everybody please hear me there is a way out of everything i believe there is a way out of everything sister that marital delay in your family can be broken to pieces if a certain kind of revelation just one more thing i'll add to us and we'll pray one of the mysteries that i have learned in my life that has changed my life forever is the discernment of the body of christ i know there are many mysteries I keep repeating these things because I want your life to change. All men are not equal. Criticize me, but just listen. All men are not equal. If you take that mindset, this is not supposed to be a bad statement. Please don't misunderstand me. I wish it were a lie, but it's the truth. All men are not equal it was the apostle that was teaching the church in Corinth he said because you cannot discern the Lord's body the organogram of and the structure he said for this cause for not discerning I'm not talking of Holy Communion for not discerning the body and the individuals that have been stationed there who are carriers of your breakthrough he said some are weak how many people have died today because they have not discerned what God has put in the body it's like a table if you come to eat on the table is it not what you know that you will eat 
you see something looking yellow you are not sure and you leave it there and later you find out that that thing is good for your health that's how we are listen i'm talking about light and illumination the bible says let the word of christ dwell in us in all richness colossians 3 16. but you see one of the greatest blessings of god to the church outside the holy spirit is the positioning of gifts in the body please listen to me i've told you that there are two ministries you must encounter for your destiny to open the moment you meet christ there are two ministries you must encounter the apostolic and the prophetic the bible says the church was built with a very definite system it says christ being the chief cornerstone and directly above it are foundations the apostles and the prophets now that's not to say other um, members of the body is the same thing you don't give your life to the holy spirit you don't come and say holy spirit you died for me he didn't die for you although they are equal with god but salvation has been put in no other name there is an office that ministers salvation are we together that's how it is you have passed listen there are certain dimensions in life you can never take yourself you hear me say this thing all the time yet no matter how arrogant you are no man can bless himself there are certain dimensions that it will take a representative of this ministries it's an election by grace to open up certain doors for you and you will walk in it as if the devil never existed there are many churches who have done everything but ignore these ministries and many of you have been trained to criticize all kind I've, I've told you here just keep quiet when it comes to the body of christ serve god with truth and dignity there are many of our parents that are grounded god will invite a man to their churches and they will look at the person and say this young guy or god will invite somebody who will come and maybe the person cannot speak english very well and they now sit down intellectually and the man is teaching he may not be able to talk very well but there is an office he occupies are we together now he may talk and mix it with language and you are there calculating intellectually say i thought I, I need somebody with rema tell me greek and hebrew words whereas the person sent he came out dressed like john like 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 a prophet even jesus could not ignore the ministry of john and excel because when he came he looked for the one who that mantle was upon that foundational mantle john said ah i've seen you say no suffer it to be so I, I will not break protocol. Jesus would have been surprised if he didn't pass through John. When it was time, the Holy Ghost spoke to certain apostolic councils, separate me Paul and Barnabas. He spoke to them. There was something they did upon Paul and Barnabas. Did you know that Agabus had daughters that were prophets, but they never excelled in ministry? Look at that they died with their prophetic grace because although they were prophets they ignored the structure of the body listen there are many people the bible talked about for a little time and you never had them again that's why some of us are where we are gods of ourselves with our own rema bragging all around there was a pastor friend i used to watch him um the guy loves me so much he admires me but I think for a very long time i used to see him he just comes around laughs around when they are prophesying or speaking he's even embarrassed sometimes to lift his hand he just he just lifts his hands as if he's waving and i knew that this guy would never receive anything in his mind he thinks he will receive let me tell you something there are requirements from receiving from these gifts one of the requirements is honor 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 you must honor both the person and the office he says he please this is not human worship i don't want to i have no business i wish i were not the one preaching this i wish we were just hearing a tape so that you will believe it's true i have seen listen i have passed so many people who there is enough grace to wipe their tears and their families and i've been shocked the way the anointing was locked up within me as i watched these families go down in penury because honor is the key that releases the anointing jesus entered certain cities and passed like this 
a woman was pressing his garment and other people were looking at him what have you ignored that has refused your door from opening please hear what i'm saying koinonia don't wait until after 10 years of miserable failure and then you now think and say let me listen to this message hear it now and rise wake up and leave rise above your contemporaries as if the devil does not exist a few who have learned this key have broken every limitation and barrier the bible says for this cause many are weak when it was time when sickness when the serpents were destroying the people nothing happened to moses question what did the snake see that made them not to bite moses it's in your bible right that he told him lift up a serpent is it not true look at how people were immune in the bible things were happening to others elijah there was famine he never was even concerned about the famine because he knew that nothing would happen to him there was famine in samaria elisha came he was not saying hey i'm dying give me food he came and saw women eating their children and said what happened there was another mystery that gave him supply brothers and sisters there is a way out of every situation in your life you can come to a man of god to pray for you but you can just come as if you are coming to somebody who manufactures charm do you know even if jesus appears right now there are people who encounter him and still go back unchanged yes absolutely don't you think because he's jesus he will change the law is still the same if you cannot honor his representatives then you do not honor him the result will still be the same who told look at how many parents please you're a pastor how think of how many parents in your church or how many elderly people have come to meet you to say man of god you see let me tell you something many people just believe that ministers and, and, and newspapers have made this happen they believe ministers of the gospel are daft people fraudulent people how to manipulate money from members and enrich themselves that's the mindset newspaper gives and many people carry that faulty mindset and some of us as young as we are that's our thinking look how our families are suffering you pray individually and say god help god said i answered the prayer sins open your eyes and see you have ignored ministries that can wipe your tears you are there a, 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 a program that you will finish five years you are still there seven years on your verge of moving you have never said for once can i not is there no system in the kingdom to bail me out for this cause i'm just sharing with you one mystery i think this is the cheapest of all mysteries because you don't even have to be intelligent to access this i have watched with shock the way i have ministered to people and their lives have changed a, a woman gave a testimony and this is true this is I, do, I, I don't mean it in any idolatry the woman said her daughter had been telling her to listen to one koinonia message and she said she always used to ignore it because you know she had problem with praying in tongues and all of that you, you know what i'm saying and one day things got bad and she said she was listening to one message in her dream that her daughter was listening to and then god was you know using my voice to just challenge her and say go and listen to that message and change your story she said she told her daughter to transfer it into her phone listen there was someone that had owed her for a long time as soon as she transferred that text message just the text as in uh, you know how it, you transfer a message it just touched her phone that was how the person called her and said where are you come and meet me at the bank the woman said this is a lie what is going on here it will only work for those who already have honor presiding them otherwise you will pass it like this and move on. when the child of the shunammite woman died she was not confused she knew where to run to she said saddle your ass he said don't stop whoever asks you is all well say it is well and he sent gehazi gehazi came and looked at the woman he says oh well says well give me a chance i know the person i'm looking for and she went there and said you represented something in the spirit that brought this child otherwise this child would never have come know what to do with this child she put his office under pressure 
Elisha tried everything, spoke, the child refused to wake up and he took his mantle. He said, even if it's for me to be foolish, see, there is a way you can honor a man of God and put pressure on his office, not anointing his office. It will force him to release something into your life. When I say honor, I don't mean money. A deep, a deep seated, there are a few men of God I've met in my life. And the way I honored them when they were speaking and blessing me, I knew it came from their spirit. Their spirit. I'll find somewhere to stop because I want us to pray. Brothers and sisters, results are possible in the spirit. It's not a matter of luck. It's time for you to start knowing what you are not doing. The mystery of the communion. Many of us take communion just as something they do in church. Get me wafers. Get me zobo. Okay, there's five alive. Bring it. And you're like, oh God, thank you. And you just throw it. You just took breakfast. Whereas it has delivered a lot of people. Tight thing. You do it, but not with understanding. So the moment promise comes to stand here or anybody, you just you are just waiting. Those who are tight as you come and stand. And although you are supposed, you are doing something spiritual, it's not working. Because it's not done. The Bible says, honor the Lord. It didn't say bribe him. You squeeze your envelope, you just come and stand and say, oh yeah, God take. No. When Abraham met Melchizedek, king of Salem, that ancient city. Listen, do you know it was after he gave the tithe, immediately God spoke to him and said, fear not. He was teaching him a mystery. He said, I'm about to bless you. It takes courage to be prosperous because you are about to be controversial. So fear not. There is something I'm about to open in your life that will make people say, well, when did it happen? He said, don't be afraid. I know I'm about to bless you, but my first instruction is fear not. You have done something that is about to bring prosperity. People will not understand the mystery. So be courageous to take the criticisms because I'm about to change your life. He said, I am your exceeding great reward. Abraham is so intelligent. The moment God said, I am your exceeding great reward, he, the, Abraham started thinking generational blessings because he knew that blessing was too much. He said, God, so let's talk about my future because I know that a, a man is a failure until he has a successor. You are now beginning to speak generational. Where is the child? And God says, ah, who is this man that, ha that has my mind? That's how to do business with God. You have so aligned, you understand the language of God. Look at what Solomon did. When it came to Solomon, Solomon said, Lord, give me an understanding heart. I am little. Let me lead your people. He knew where to touch God. Ah, God said, you didn't ask for the life of your enemies. Gave him riches, wealth, and honor. Gave him. You see why Solomon was blessed? He had understanding understanding it was an impartation just one mystery i've shared with you do you know if you hold on to this mystery this law of honor this year alone you will get more results than many people get in their lifetime i promise you just this law just this law just this law something you are ignoring is allowing tragedies to continue in your life something you are refusing to hear is keeping you bound sister it's not like a man cannot come there is something you are ignoring if you will make that adjustment tonight god will surprise you there are brothers here there are things you are ignoring you don't pay attention to instructions there are people inside and outside you don't approach God with a stubborn heart. You approach God with a childlike heart. Please, please, Koinonia, hear me. I'm about to pray for you. For heaven's sake, believe the things you hear me say. I love you too much to mislead you. Gentiles, please give us Isaiah 60 again. Verse 3. This is the year that Gentiles should come to your light. This is the year it should happen. 
that you see somebody get up and come and meet you i mean gentiles coming to your light they come with their blessings when jesus was born the wise men saw his star they started looking for it with gold frankincense when they looked at jesus they looked at a baby but they were wise enough to know this is not a baby they started bowing down they didn't wait until he became an adult they didn't say let's see let's watch if he becomes a serious man they knew that this guy is the one that was prophesied and they started bowing down if wise men could bow to a baby bow to certain principles and change your life forever hallelujah do you believe what i shared with you tonight please the body of christ is not lacking revelation what we are lacking is understanding and the grace to do to live by the truth we know he said now that ye know these things happy are you if you do them i now see why god constrained me i was to start another series i mean a, an explosive series and god was just constraining me no let the people get this thing otherwise you keep dumping revelation after revelation and you know what i'm doing to you the more i keep giving you revelations without probing your reception a time will come you will be so puffed up of knowledge without any result and it will be dangerous hallelujah saul kai oh my goodness saul's donkey was missing his father kish brothers and sisters hear me there was no hope of finding that donkey i hope you know naturally speaking three days they could not find the donkey and they say you know what let's not waste our time there is a man there is a man this man there is a prophet there is a man of god and they said ah, there's nothing to take to him they were smart enough and the moment they went to the gates at the gates they saw him and he looked at them do you know what he told them he said go and wait for me and i will tell you everything in your heart do you know what is a mountain to you is within the grace of somebody to stamp it for you what looks like a mountain you are there complaining about house rent and god is saying no 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 everybody is growing but there are people who have been graced to trivialize your challenges if you have the eyes to see look at at once they met samuel samuel said i will tell you every he didn't say i will sit down for counseling he said just go up there wait for me i will tell you what is in your heart and when he went there their biggest problem became the smallest he said i know you came for restoration forget about that that's not the issue the donkey has been found is that a human being you think that's a human being talking no that's a system it's not a man it's a system in a human body the same thing with melchizedek you think melchizedek was just a man just a man older than abraham how can a man bless a man and and say possessor of heavens and earth can a man bless another man like that a man that even christ associated himself with the bible says his priesthood is after the order of melchizedek read your bible and see all these strange men elijah noah i've taught you do you know what it means for a man to build an ark that is equivalent to three stadiums three stadiums story building three stadiums alone in hundred years he built it is that a normal human being made of gopher wood so you know why he cursed his son i've told you he didn't curse his son just because he saw his nakedness there was something the son saw is a mystery are we together now when jezebel was rising to judge people elijah shows up the tishbite the bible calls him you think that's a normal human being he appears again and he appears again in revelation what of enoch the seventh man from creation he used to walk among them and one day they didn't find him just imagine one day we don't find aaron no grave no nothing it's after he leaves we may say ah so this guy we have been calling aaron that's what happened to jesus when he resurrected people looked at him and said my goodness so it is true see when we get to heaven one of the shock for people is when god shows the the spiritual content of some of the people that were walking on the earth some of us will put our hands on our head and say i lived with this guy forever I, he was my roommate yet i didn't have the eyes to see i was in his church i was even an usher 
there was capacity like this to help me look at Gehazi foolish man if you wanted money if if you are with a master that blesses somebody and you want money is it not to kneel down and beg rather than going to lie you see why he's foolish very stupid man that's why he didn't receive any mantle a man who can wipe a rich man's story wouldn't you just kneel down and say my father change my story and he said is it not because the lord has anointed you to be king poured oil upon him and say as you go you will find two men they will appear from nowhere the word created them look at how these guys manipulated nature at their at the frequency of their will they were like god they laughed at elisha and said you have bald head he he created a bear a sheep bear it came out at the children and disappeared what kind the bible says in hebrews 11 he said the earth is not worthy of this kind of people you see them walk the earth is not worthy oh no something you are ignoring is destroying your life we are going to pray the purpose of this teaching tonight is to let you know that between you and your mountain is a mystery is a mystery away it can keep that mountain there forever or shatter it I have met people who changed my life in less than 24 hours less than 24 hours less than 24 hours what are you ignoring some of you your family members have ignored you that's why things have not changed they have refused to admit that there is an anointing on your life so every time you step in your neighbors are there benefiting from your grace but they have refused to acknowledge it brothers and sisters although they are your mothers and fathers things will never change until they come into that recognition please rise up on your feet this prayer session we're entering i want you to pray with all your heart Lift up your hands and thank the Lord for this word tonight. Illumination. The grace that comes, hear me, when men have an understanding. The grace that comes when people can honor. Thank you Lord for this word. I like you to lift your voice and pray and say lord i know that the mountain before me can live i just don't know how to let it go but i want it to go in this year lift your voice and pray this mountain standing before me there is a way out pray lift your ministry lift your academics lift your job Lift everything before God. Lord, I know I've been trying and trying and trying. I've been trying. I've done all I know to do. But tonight I admit. I admit. I, just show me, oh God, show me what I need to do. Those outside, make sure you are praying. Jesus brought you here to change your life forever. Light, 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 light. Sika barato soto predege de bele de bos. Saka prata setele pratika de koshoto prada na bala na bala na bala. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want you to mention every area of your life where you know sincerely that you have not seen results. Be very sincere with God and say, Lord, there has to be a way out of this. Lift your voice and pray. Please take it serious, Koinonia.
Lord, I've not seen the anointing in my life. Pray. Lord, I'm tired of struggling. I lay hands on the sick and nothing happens. I've prayed and fasted. Nothing is happening. Lord, my finances. I've read books, but there's something I've not seen. It's just not changing. No matter what I do, I know something is wrong. Lord, favor. I've not caught the mystery of favor. Everybody hates me. Everybody runs away from me. Even those who want to help me change their minds. Something must be wrong somewhere. I admit tonight that I need help. Lord, I pray for my academic. It's been from one tragedy to another. There, there's got to be a way out. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen, we are still praying. I'd like you to pray and say, Lord, I make a vow before you. I'm on a strategic project to eradicate ignorance and confusion in my life in strategic areas i ask for grace i ask for grace pray grace lord i will sit down with this issue of finances and resolve it once and for all i will sit with this issue of powerlessness this issue of lack of church growth this issue of not having a message to preach this issue of failure all around Aparato soto prende que deba la rabos. Rakata parada bas. Come on, be angry with the challenges in your life and pray. Pray, pray. I was studying. I wanted to find out the secret of church growth. I've heard people say it. I've listened to them. I couldn't quite get the light they got and one time I was praying and the Spirit of God took me to mark one two three and it was like an anointing that came I knew I had gotten it I knew I had gotten it when people talk about prosperity most of the scriptures in Deuteronomy 8 18 I've not gotten light from that scripture of God and God will take you through that word to somewhere else that becomes your access point out Are we together? Two more prayer points. You're going to pray and say, Lord, every principle I have ignored that is responsible for where I am now, I receive grace to make amendments. Go ahead and pray. Many of us have ignored the law of honor. You have not discerned the body. Lord, I cry for grace tonight every principle that should have opened a door for me i ignored it out of pride i ignored it out of ignorance i i ignored it out of complacency and laziness tonight oh god i cry tonight oh god i cry pray pray Hallelujah. He said, I commend you. I commend you to the word of his grace. He said, He's able to make you wise and to give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified you have ignored the word and you've gone around looking for things that only the word can give or you have been in close touch with the word but just growing in knowledge without revelation revelation is not knowing what scripture has said 
Revelation is knowing how to make it work in your life. That's revelation. God said it's not revelation, it's prophecy. It takes understanding to convert prophecy into manifestation. God said it's prophecy, not revelation. Revelation is where you have caught the mystery of translating that prophecy into a revelation into a, a manifestation in your life many of us are carrying god said wonderful but prophecy has a dynamics to its manifestation there is a there is an alignment there is a path you have to play please pray again and say lord what have i ignored that is responsible for where i am open my eyes i will make amends i will make amends in the name of jesus christ Hallelujah. Listen, I'm about to pray for you. Do you know that there is a relationship between soul winning and answered prayer? Are we together? Mm. This is just one mystery that can explain the reason why many of us are not getting results in prayer. There is a direct relationship between saving souls genuinely and answered prayers. A man can save souls and walk his way into unending breakthrough. Just like that. The Bible says in Daniel chapter 12, right? When you read from verse 3, there about, it says, They that be wise will shine like the firmament, and they that turn many to righteousness as the stars even forevermore. That's a mystery. That any man who is committed to turning men to righteousness must shine as the stars. He said, he that winneth souls is wise. And Solomon, speaking of wisdom, said, with me are riches, wealth, and honor. Yea, durable riches and righteousness. He said, by me kings reign and princes decree justice. Just for winning souls, you are entitled for a baptism of wisdom. And many of us want to be wise. We want to do all of that. And you watch sinners go to hell. You are coming for meeting and you watch people around. You are not passionate. You are embarrassed. The Bible says, he that is ashamed of me before men, I will be ashamed of him before my father. Not on the last day. He is before the father making advocacy for you. He says, I will be ashamed of him before my father. Are we together now? Say, Lord, I receive grace to be doggedly involved in anywhere your heart is. Many of us don't know that the key to get God's heart is be involved where his heart is. God is in the business of making sure many come to righteousness. You can't stand in your camp alone and say, God, come and give me tea. Come and give me bread. And God is saying the time is running out. There are people going to hell. This is the direction I'm facing. If you want me to see you, turn around and come here. Don't just stand behind there. Lift your voice and pray and say, Lord, let, let me run at your heartbeat. Let me run at your heartbeat. Let me be involved in what you are involved in. Not just my own agenda. Let me be involved in what you are involved in. Souls, souls transform. Souls genuinely saved. Souls established in righteousness. So salvation is a form of deliverance. The salvation that has been given believers today that we enjoy. The Bible does not just call it redemption alone. The Bible calls it deliverance. 
what then is deliverance write this down i did my best to scrabble an intelligent definition that will capture everything that i believe the word of god um says about deliverance so let's let's try and see if my definition makes sense ready deliverance is a system for experientially establishing the victory and the authority of christ or jesus christ don't worry take it gradually i will repeat myself deliverance is a system for experientially establishing the victory and the authority of jesus christ i'm going to continue i'm just breaking so that you write let's take it again deliverance is a system for experientially underline the word experientially establishing the victory and authority of jesus christ can i continue over satan comma demons and all the powers of darkness concerning our lives a system for experientially establishing the victory and authority of jesus christ over satan demons and all the powers of darkness over satan demons and all the powers of darkness concerning our lives by this definition we see that deliverance for a believer and the scriptural approach to deliverance is much more than the activity of physical exertion like a present day fight deliverance is concerned with establishing making a reality that has been finished to become your experience here and now are we together so that deliverance is a system for experientially establishing the victory and authority of christ jesus over satan demons and all the powers of darkness concerning our lives i wrote something small here that deliverance um and then by extension spiritual warfare for the believer in christ today is about establishing and manifesting victory rather than fighting for it listen carefully our approach to the subject of deliverance and spiritual warfare has to do with establishing and manifesting victory rather than fighting to create it it's important that you have this understanding and this revelation alone will make all the difference in your approach to the subject of deliverance and the subject of spiritual warfare that you and i should approach the subject of deliverance from a perspective that seeks to establish and manifest the victory that is already wrought through the substitutionary sacrifice of christ rather than an attempt to physically exert energy to fight and win as though it was a product of your own exertion i think this is this in itself i can dwell all night explaining this because this may be the reason why many many well-meaning individuals and by extension deliverance ministries get little or no victory out of the the abundance of the physical exertions many of us here may be victims of that experience so we are not talking about a state here where you fight for victory in terms of physically confronting satan one on one as it were i will tell you where that revelation came from are we blessed so say after me deliverance for the believer has to do with establishing and manifesting authority over darkness rather than fighting for it are you getting the point now let me dramatize something here please come doctor come watch this you stand here and um, hold my book this is your inheritance this is your possession 
please look up i want to dramatize something that will help us you stand here and then ah they are all ladies where are the gentlemen sam come now watch this the bible says and you have to understand this is where i think many people find confusion when the bible when the bible speaks look at this very carefully god speaks from the standpoint of eternity he does not speak as if he's talking within the frame of time are we together so in the speakings of god he always speaks with the expression of completion which is not a lie but then the dynamics of converting the prophetic realities that have been finished in christ to now become the experience of the saints is where there is confusion are we together so the bible tells us from the foundation of the earth the lamb was slain but there are still people going to hell today are we together if the lord is to talk to you now if you were to see jesus jesus will look at you and tell you you should not be crying financially because you are walking in abundance that's how he talks but then you will think that he's being rude and sarcastic to you because at the point he's talking to you you may not even have five naira he cannot speak otherwise his his viewpoint spans he's not dimensional in his approach if he breaks himself to be dimensional it's an act of his mercy to help man understand him are we together that's why he's called alpha omega the word and there was just an expression to help us comprehend he is both the beginning and the end so to him there is nothing like beginning and end in his dimension that does not exist are you getting my point now so god can speak to you and say emeka finish the house by tomorrow whereas you don't even have land that's god speaking emeka finish the house by tomorrow and as at the time he's talking your landlord is waiting with a policeman in front of you and god will never talk about the landlord emeka i have given you your house and your key you will even see it in a vision god giving you key and you say thank you and then wake up from the vision with a, a rude knock from the door by an angry landlord now how do i reconcile what i have seen because god will not change he speaks once it is only you that hears twice the first hearing is the hearing of the flesh the second hearing is now the hearing of the spirit that brings understanding once have i spoken but you need to hear twice because the first hearing is from a carnal point but then the holy spirit now helps you to have the ear that the bible says he that hath an ear the second kind of ear you now hear from the spirit the hearing that brings understanding that's why the bible says faith comes by hearing but there is a superior hearing hearing now not just by your senses by the word of god are you understanding what i'm teaching you now so this guy is now confused and he's saying in the realm of the spirit the lord spoke to me and said i have given you abundance yet nothing is happening and then the lord appears to you and you're trying to say oh lord look at all the demons and the witches and then the lord tells you something like my grace is sufficient or my victory is still in force and you wake up and you are like oh god how can you be speaking like this whereas in experience that's what paul was trying to teach the church in hebrew he was quoting from psalm 5 what is man that thou art mindful of not the son of man that thou visitest him the bible says you have made him lower than elohim are we together you have crowned him with glory and honor you have set him above the works of your hands and that in doing that you did not leave anything under his feet but he creates a dimension he said but as it is today we do not yet see experience so you must be able to balance between the prophetic communications of the spirit the prophetic communications of the word and the experiential manifestation of the same in your life otherwise you will die like a chicken quoting the word of god between the prophetic speakings of god and the manifestation in your life there is a mystery that connects them and those who have this are the ones who become possessors it is your possession in christ but it takes an understanding of what to do
to make it your possession here forever oh lord thy word is settled where it never said in your life thy word is settled in heaven it will take engaging these mysteries to make the word settled in your life ah your help has come this this is already a deliverance for someone because for many years you kept jumping oh my god i see victory jesus said it is finished everything is all right wonderful amazing my life is full of beauty and glory you are not lying but after 10 years 15 years your father said this thing and while he was saying it sickness was eating him up till he died i, I don't want you to feel bad i'm not trying to be sarcastic are we together you said this yourself and after 10 years there's nothing in your life that demonstrates the victory of christ and some out of that frustration will just say this is a lie no it's not a lie forever your word is settled but to know how to make it our experience one of the mysteries that have been allocated by the wisdom of god to make spiritual realities that are established in the christ to manifest in our life is called the mystery of deliverance are you getting the point now it is not the only kingdom mystery i've taught you many of them we are approaching one of them now this gentleman wants to possess his possession this is a son of jacob he's read obadiah chapter 1 and verse 17 he's believed are we together now because the bible says whoever believes our reports the arm of the lord will be made manifest in his life now this brother believes but every time standing between him and that inheritance just turn to face me sam is an obstacle this brother has read in the bible that we have been translated colossians 1 13. it didn't say we will be the bible says we have been but he's seen something that is is a cause in his life watch this this guy knows the word of god i hope you understand that he has believed he's a worker in church and he has seen that every time people get to the edge the edge of breakthrough something happens now he said in the name of jesus i don't believe this i am exempted and to his shock regardless of that confession his life is still a victim of it that thing happens as if the thing didn't hear him are you getting what i'm saying now please listen very carefully okay this guy comes from a family where everybody is barren i'm sorry sorry for this are we together everyone is barren and now he makes up his mind no it is god that makes everyone a fruitful i mean he can make the wilderness to be fruitful you know children are heritage from the lord now he has confessed that he has done that well and it is true but in experience now he gets married and to his shock he finds out that his wife cannot get pregnant and he said no the devil is just joking let me just release my faith and you watch what happens one month becomes one year becomes two years becomes decades becomes 20 years and the man is angry by 75 and he's no longer believing in jesus and when you come to him as a zealous young man what giant from koinonia man of god since i was blind say if you don't get out of here i will slap you i spent 60 years forcing the word to work my conclusion is that god alongside all the scammers called preachers are liars some of us that person i just described may be your father may be your mother they will show you pictures of them and reinhard bonke when he was young and tell you i and tear it in your presence and say i don't believe all that junk again the frustration that comes you come from a family that is full of poverty and goodness you found the truth and you are happy you are rejoicing over it and all of a sudden you find out that you are now a graduate and your elder sisters are looking at you and say we graduated 15 years ago none of us the highest among us just got a contract job for one week and it was over and you come and say it's because you know how arrogant we are young people when we are just touching revelation we mock at others and laugh and say oh sisters it's because of the church you are going to me i'm going to koinonia wait and see what happens then you are a graduate and you celebrate the first christmas as a graduate with no job it touches you and you pretend i don't know i think god is working something powerful after you dance and sing and do what you know to do 
by five years you now sit with them in a discussion and you are like ah, ah. so this this thing is true this is why my mother was not happy this is why my father was not happy this series is saving you many of you many of you are already going through what i'm saying now and if you don't open your eyes and your ears to listen to the way out you will be very frustrated how about men of god like our sister shared who come from terrible families with idol worship and then they get born again filled with the holy spirit and begin to walk in strange miracles and start a ministry and say oh god god forbid i mean i used to be from a family of idol worship now i'm free and the guy begins his ministry after five years he finds out that the members go down everything goes down an attack comes on him and the ministry and he goes to tell his uncle and the uncle laughs and said why do you think i stopped being a pastor because i was once a pastor were you told he said no so well let me educate you i was once a pastor the crusade that happened in this city i was the chairman organizing committee the same thing that happened you would try to argue and say uncle my own is not like your own he said you he said it's the same thing it's there and then many of you now just like i was stand and you are confused you say no no let me go back to the bible and you still see it there and have translated us from the kingdom of darkness and have translated us not will translate and have translated us many of you rush and come to us men of god and say sir i read here and have translated me i believed everything you said why is my life like this listen to what we tell you you don't have faith or you really don't believe it i if you be, look at me i'm rich i'm entering a jeep so he said i'm okay money can deceive to think just because you have a jeep and you have a nice watch you are free no there are many other dimensions you don't have to be delivered to be rich there are many people under yokes of darkness that are millionaires so be careful lest you use money the reason is because money has a very funny way of making your needs met so it can lie to you to think just because you don't see any obvious need yet you are free we have used money for a long time in the body to mean that i am free and say what's the proof look at my estate look at five cars look at a flourishing church does that look like someone under oppression my helpers hi hi after reading volumes of books i went to almost every bookstore i could find and gathered books i read books to prepare myself on fire I was seeing the power of God move through my life. I was having encounters. And then to my greatest shock, in the midst of that spiritual height, demons come to me regardless. I mean, I started quoting scriptures from secondary school. You would receive awards. There were 52 scriptures. If you could quote, they would give you an award. I don't know how many times I got that award. And you would think, how then should I hide the word in my heart? To quote 52 scriptures every year, new ones. I'm not talking of old ones. I could quote chapters of the Bible. And here comes demons into my room. And I'm shouting in Jesus' name, the blood of Jesus. And they are not moving. I'm saying in the name of Jesus, I'm a child of God. And they are not moving. <sighs> Who will I tell this? Who will believe me god are you have you suddenly become weak listen when you see me just stand to talk and demons are crying find out what happened i want to show you where the problem is these demons will press my neck 
the anointing didn't leave me the anointing is still there the same way elisha died of sickness with the healing anointing still in his bones why didn't the anointing work while he was deteriorating to death yet the anointing raised a dead body who didn't have faith the dead body was not begging please raise me just it came in contact with bones couldn't the anointing bring back flesh like ezekiel 37 because we know it's a possibility so why didn't the anointing bring back the prophet again there are mysteries in this kingdom what you do not know you can argue to your detriment it will smash you into pieces like it's happening to many people we are just not honest to confront truth until we find light for me i i pray that god will make you like me i don't hear yes sir i keep searching until the truth is found many of you you see when the holy spirit refuses to allow an answer satisfy you is because there is a grace in that area he wants you to reveal to the body so you come to a man of god you come to me or anybody and we just give you explanations uh, to manage our ego and the holy spirit to say no no with all honor that's not the answer he's telling you find out so that you can help someone if i didn't pass through what i passed through now i probably will wave this teaching like many are waving and say look let's just focus on jesus and you are focusing on jesus but you are seeing that something is wrong everything the word of god declares is true it is the system for accessing it we do not know and what we have been taught is not wrong but is largely incomplete this series is to give you the balance you hear testimonies of people already look at the pastors with their churches look at the gentlemen that came someone from us just gets up another person just sends 4.5 you think the person doesn't have relatives in need doesn't he have brothers and sisters who are looking for thirty thousand, and he can't help them and then come somewhere i told you you're what Just follow me by now this brother is frustrated oh god give me my possession and he comes and he says man of god i'm still waiting and i said don't worry abraham waited 25 years what what are you complaining about there is more boy come on just be paid and i start getting angry you are getting rude you are challenging my anointing my anointing is angry with you i will curse you you see that and the brother leaves me quietly and goes back and he knows something is wrong I'm not being sarcastic I love the body listen carefully there must be an answer to this that answer is what will bring about the experience of possessing your possession that even even the critic in your life will know that the hand of God this brother has caught this this sister has caught this I prayed to God eh? and I told God I said by the time Lord we finish this series let us hear of testimonies that people will stand up and say no this is this is if not because the person sharing it is there we will think it's a lie or stage manage I told you last week you can know that deliverance has happened to a person and a family by the speed that's where you know that those realities have been piled up in the spirit for many years and it's usually an avalanche overnight doors liftings all kinds of things happen do you believe that a woman who should have had six children and has been barren for six years or for 10 years or 20 years you think it's one child that will come at once right. by the time god shifts that barrier you will be surprised the kind of testimonies that will surprise you you believe that a man that has been grounded by witchcraft for decades the only testimony he will get is a new job that gives him thirty thousand. when will he recover no that's not the kind of testimony that follows deliverance the kind of testimony that follows deliverance is a sign and a wonder God makes a statement that I can in delivering you restore the years the canker worm the palmer worm you should be married 20 years ago but then I move and give you triplets two times six children at once but upon Mount Zion there shall be deliverance whatever it is 
and when that happens the sons of Jacob shall possess their possession hallelujah so this brother is standing then he takes an aggressive step watch this and then his eyes is open in the spirit watch this and he sees a spirit appear to him and tell him you will never make it but the Bible says behold I give you power so Satan where did you even get your audacity to show up in my room remember your room is anointed remember there's a bottle of anointing oil in that room don't forget remember there's a communion set in that room are you getting what I'm saying remember while the demon is talking to you a Bible is on your bed have you forgotten sometimes a worship song is even playing yet he shows up no invitation he didn't knock the door and talks nonsense to you and all of a sudden he leaves who will I tell this to I can't tell apostle because I'm here. I will keep quiet and that's how many of us have been keeping quiet as a man of God you finish preaching in a crusade and go back in the night and a spirit comes to molest you to even sleep with you you get up in the morning who will I tell this embarrassing thing and while you are sitting someone comes for counseling counseling number one man of God there is a demon that comes to sleep with me every night you almost want to run away because that's your own experience too it will shock you that you will lay hands on the person and he will start manifesting and be free and you just wave the person and then return back and say my God now oh God who will deliver me Ay 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 Ebeniza Ebeniza Ay 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 Ebeniza my pastor Hallelujah Please go and sit down guys let's talk now why why does it look like there is a an extreme difficulty for the saints to make manifest the realities remember the bible says he that did not spare his son are we bible students that he that did not spare his son but offered him up for us will he not with him freely freely mark the word freely give us how many things then the Bible says that they that have received the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness, what is their heritage? They shall reign. Yet we do not see this thing happening. That means something is wrong. So deliverance. Is one of the mysteries that was allocated by the wisdom remember the Bible says that it should be made to principalities and powers the manifold not one fold manifold the multifaceted wisdom of God deliverance is one of the expressions of the multifaceted wisdom of God so deliverance is concerned with experientially establishing and manifesting the victory and authority that we have in the Christ rather than physically fighting for it let me tell you where this fighting mentality came from and of course the Bible says we should fight the fight of faith and all of that but I mean this kind of fight have you seen people go to sleep and they tell you ah I, I fought and this and in a dream you saw yourself fighting the victory was almost there are we together then somebody woke you you get up with anger and annoyance and say i was about to, to stab the last snake and you woke me what kind of you are you are a wicked person watch this and then you go back to sleep again and sometimes the battle continues it is because of the way spiritual things act themselves that we have believed that just because in a dream or in a vision are we together some of you even wake up from that encounter feeling physically exerted so because of that scenario of acting we now believe 
that warfare is about physically trying to fabricate victory regardless of what you see or the way the expressions come in the spirit the word of god remains true that christ has won the victory are you are you with me now that's where the confusion comes from and especially for those who walk very strongly in the prophetic ministry they have helped in no way to amplify this com this co this confusion because what you see if not balanced with mental transformation and a good word base you will confuse people i can stand right now and make her stand and look at doctor in a vision and in that vision i can be seeing him inside a pit are we together and now i say doctor you are in a pit it's not a lie but that is just a prophetic symbolism to mean bondage are we together by the time i engage in whatever mystery the victory may show as him coming out from the pit so over many years of seeing different scenarios i may now write a book or i may now propose a theology are we together where people now start physically fighting to manifest their victory and this is why satan reigns over us because he's a master of the sense realm he knows that what you can see will challenge you let me ask you a question what happened to you last week with your night prayer are you not shocked at the level of attack that amplified you see that it happened for many of us right i told you it will happen because satan is the master of the sense realm you wake up in the night and sleep and go back and the same experience of them oppressing you supposedly happens again some of you as soon as you finish you went back in fact for some of you that activity has been on break since you you became unserious with god but now that you just started a little prayer all of a sudden it came now let me tell you satan will use your senses and tell you the word of god claims this if god were so powerful where is it then you will now dance to the realm of the senses and say kai that means let me go back to sleep in jesus name i must go back for the battle to come you are already defeated there's no possibility of victory under that condition in this kingdom the only instrument listen carefully the only the saints don't fight our warfare is the warfare of taking advantage of the forces of the spirit allocated to us the force of the word the force of the blood the name of jesus and all of these mysteries listen very carefully to enforce i repeat enforce if the purpose of your engaging those things is to create a physical fight you are defeated already the devil will eat you up and, and spit you watch this jesus is standing haven't walked on water to come peter says if it be thou listen carefully now bid me come and jesus says come peter gets up and started walking on water are we together now do you think while peter was walking on the water the water stopped being boisterous it still continued but it's just that because his focus was on jesus are we together that connection so the power that kept him on that water was not in his legs it was on the gaze of jesus are we together now the moment peter didn't stop walking on water he only shifted his gaze to somewhere else and his legs started going down for as long as his gaze was on jesus whatever the storm did now he's looking at jesus did not suddenly make the water quiet it was still boisterous but he was surprised that the water was not moving him the element for the victory was his connection with the eyes of jesus not his ability to walk well for as long as his legs remain but he turned his attention the bible said he saw that's what satan wants you to see satan is a master over the sense realm if he can deviate your focus to make you see the bulkiness of the challenges he will bring your faith down and strike you in a way that will affect you are we together god bless you thank you doctor we discussed access points last week that biblically speaking there are three main access points systems of authorization that satan uses that demons use all occults all 
spiritism and any kind of extra physical manifestation of evil thrives upon these three platforms number one covenants covenants we discussed it last week i'm just giving us a quick review number one covenants a covenant is the most powerful of the three because i told you that a covenant is a system of authorization and that system of authorization can go beyond an individual that's what makes it powerful my obedience may affect me alone are we together but a covenant can allow me to do something um look at this dr shown is here with his wife shade are we together if i ask doctor and i say sir i want to come to your house and he says no then i turn to his wife and say shade i want to come to your house and she says yes the covenant of marriage are we together if obeyed properly i have a right to come to that house and if he quarrels me and say i thought i didn't invite you i say no your wife who has also become one with you allowed me you see why covenants are powerful because when you see satan veto certain things about you and comes is because he knows someone else you are connected to has authorized him are you getting what i'm saying now the same way in israel today i am not aware of many israelis who have come by themselves to call upon jehovah the god of abraham isaac and jacob in fact if you go to visit israel those who take christians on a tour the jewish people are shocked that christians are crying when they see some of these monuments to them is tourism they are waiting to be paid and they see it just come so this is the cave where my savior laid and you kneel down and the jew there is in shock what kind of people are these you are being emotional you go near the wailing wall and you are crying and wailing for your sins and choking prayer points at the wall and the guy is waiting for you to finish and just pay him his money yet in the midst of it you try to kill that israeli and a covenant he's not aware of will arise and defend him what kind of unfair thing is this they farm on a mountain that should not grow yet there is something that makes the earth to increase to them remember that person doesn't believe in jesus yet when god looks at them he sees abraham and sees the covenant the most feared nation on earth a little nation but indestructible by a mystery that even themselves they cannot understand the rabbinical institutes have spent decades studying what is the secret behind the immunity of the nation of israel israel is my firstborn god has made a covenant with the firstborn the apple of his eyes that he will kill and slay any nation because of a covenant and it's an everlasting covenant that he has made so when your grandfather was draining the blood of a goat near fire you were in the loins of prophecy but then he was saying look protect us and we contract this entire estate to you watch this then all of a sudden like i said last week some white missionaries from america just came and they said what are you guys doing they say for 150 years we have been serving this shrine say no no we bring you good news of glad tidings jesus has come this is old we present to you jesus and then you embrace the gospel of salvation and you felt that peace in your heart you were happy you were glad i have received jesus two weeks later the missionaries started dying one by one remember they are the ones who got you born again and you were happy two weeks later your farm stopped producing as usual your peace was still in you you were happy and you loved jesus then you decided to come together to pray and while you prayed and prayed and prayed you just found out that one of your child started running mad on the street listen brothers and sisters there are seven gospels jesus left with the church i'm not about to preach it now but the gospel of salvation is only one of them there is the gospel of the kingdom it is the gospel of the kingdom that reveals to you the keys of the kingdom they are not called the keys of salvation 
the is the gospel of the kingdom how you engage these mysteries to manifest that which is finished from the foundations of the earth I hate to be a bearer of bad news but it's just that many of us are not honest enough to look at our lives and look at our dear parents and look at our siblings one of our dear ladies she might be here I remember it was during was it during Christmas or early New Year this year her mother and, and, and I'm sorry to just have to talk about it but her mother a godly woman was standing in church sir just like everybody wonderful woman of God in the presence of everybody looking at her in the house of God with the anointing of the spirit she fell down face forward in the presence of everybody and died right there prayer warriors came and prayed and prayed and prayed and nothing happened while that would happen her father paralyzed completely paralyzed completely in this place i'm not talking of another place when i heard that i said this is it this is it i must teach this this year this is it now do you know the family of that lady will almost beat you if you go to them with arrogance and say ladies and gentlemen look i don't know what you believe but that lady i think there are few people i know that pray like that lady in terms of consistency of the spiritual discipline of prayer what could be wrong what are we not seeing when Jesus walked the earth it was not like that the invincibility of his victory was incontestable what is wrong with our understanding So covenant number two i taught us that the second access point is ignorance don't forget ignorance ignorance is a force in the spirit just like faith ignorance is a force it can cause things to happen in fact the bible calls a certain class of the demonic organogram rulers of darkness that means their domain of dominion is every time there is lack of illumination when they come to a life or they come to a physical territory where there is lack of spiritual illumination their dominion is activated they are called rulers of the darkness of this world not another world so they search for everywhere there is darkness in this world and that becomes their jurisdiction of authority Archbishop Benson Idahosa was explaining the power of light and its ability to conquer darkness and he said that there was darkness in a land it was a story there was darkness in a land for many weeks and the people in that land went to the sun to complain s-u-n and they said son please help us there is darkness in our land and the sun said you mean it darkness everywhere he said yes and then it the said the sun said okay i'm coming to see the darkness and when the sun came there for three weeks and found out there was no darkness he said i've been you people are wasting my time i've been here for three weeks and i can't find the darkness and they said for as long as you are here the darkness cannot come so there is light the light shines the light shines notice the bible never says the light appears in darkness uh -uh. it is not the appearance of light that takes away darkness it is the shining it is the shining not just the appearance the light shines in darkness the light shines in darkness and the darkness comprehended it not are we together number three disobedience disobedience having the readiness to judge all obedience all disobedience when your obedience is complete disobedience authorizes the gates of darkness the gates of hell to prevail over the sins very quickly let's look at levels of satanic influences blessed be the name of the lord is god speaking to someone tonight
there are three main levels of satanic influences and that also includes the levels of satanic influences over the saints there is a dimension of satanic influence that cannot happen to you when you are in christ but there is a dimension of satanic influence that you can still be a victim of even though you are in christ let's look at it very quickly number one the first level of satanic influence and activity over mankind and creation is deception write it down deception the first level of spiritual attack over anyone at all is deception and this dimension can happen to both a believer and an unbeliever it was paul who was speaking um, um which of the church now help me it says galatia the church in galatia it says oh foolish galatians who has bewitched you he was talking to believers are we together the word bewitching there does not have to do with drinking blood and eating flesh to bewitch or witchcraft in this context means to cause a man to err using the tool of deception are we together so who has caused you to err by proposing a deceptive theology to you let's look at a few scriptures very quickly second peter chapter 2 we'll read verse 2 verse 12 and verse 13 if we can run through it very quickly second peter chapter 2 we'll, look, we'll read verse 2 verse 12 and 13 media please help us second peter chapter 2 and then we'll look at revelation chapter 12 and verse 9 the bible says and many shall follow their pernicious ways deceptive ways by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of the bible is talking of a kind of deception here are we together now i don't want to go into other uh, more modern versions so that you see what pernicious there is but just know that he's speaking within the context of deception here go to verse 12 please 12 and then 13. it says but these paul is really i mean apostle peter here is really angry and he's using an expression that may even be considered offensive he said but these as natural brute beasts made to be taken and destroyed speak evil of the things that they understand not speak evil of the things that they understand not he says and shall utterly perish in their own corruption that means that believers have been made to be deceived by the arrogance of bringing argument upon a doctrine you do not understand there are many people who would have been delivered but because they sat down under a preacher who believes in himself he's not being deceived took them away from the light that would have blessed them the bible says they speak evil of the things that they do not understand there is a level of deception where you take people away from the truth in an attempt to save them just because you do not understand the relevance of that body of truth to the church and there are many of us men of god who are victims of this there are many believers who would not have been in the kind of spiritual situations that they are in except that they sat down under our tutelage and under our mentorship and we vented volumes of our ignorance to their minds that derailed them from the path they were already following to liberty they followed us away from their breakthrough let's look at the second revelation chapter 12 and verse 9 again media please help us very quickly we are still looking at deception three verses here i found just to explain the different kinds of deception this is talking about the great dragon revelation 12 and the great dragon was cast out that old serpent called the devil and satan which deceived how many the whole world so satan part of the system of establishing his dominion upon the earth and upon every territory is deception he deceived the whole world the bible says he was cast into where he was cast into where uh oh earth there's a problem 
the deceiver that deceives the whole world was thrown out of heaven unfortunately he landed here what do you think will happen here on earth deception so he comes to eve and manipulates eve comes to adam and says adam come let me tell you something did god really say that a b c d and adam said well he said we may freely eat of the food eve said this and that and that and then he said no there is something god is hiding from you god is hiding this i hope you know that satan never um, satan never wanted i used to think satan wanted to replace god no no satan didn't want to replace god he wanted to run a parallel government i will be like not i will be the most high the god continue your throne sit there i will also i want to sit by your right hand now you understand what happened to man satan wanted to sit let's let's go since since the word eloha elohim it is plural add me to the godhead that's what he wanted i am i have done too much i hope you know i, I like oh dear i don't want to go into the pre adamite dispensation but i hope you know when you begin to read jeremiah chapter 4 i, I don't want to go there don't, don't don't go there media um for time's sake you you realize that satan was sent as a representative of the love of god to the then civilization and the then creation what jesus represents to our civilization was what lucifer the light bearer the custodian of the mysteries of the kingdom he was sent he didn't just deceive a third of the angels are you seeing how powerful his deception is a third of the angels that are in heaven where god is they fell for him talk more of you and then he deceived the kings of the earth and he was thrown down to ashes and the kings and the nations lamented they say you have become like one of us jeremiah chapter 4 when you read you who brought the nations the bible says he weakened the nation that was his sin it was not just pride there was something he made that made the nations weak and now he has become like one of us and he raised up a lamentation then you begin to compare with other scriptures that's what led to the darkness that was in Genesis chapter 1 and verse 2. The judgment that God declared upon that then civilization. Satan. The first occupant I told you of the garden of Eden was not Adam. It was Satan. That was in Eden, the garden of the Lord. So when Satan was watching God recreate the earth and then put men there. Satan said, okay, God finish and go. And let me come to the garden i'm used to he knew where to found to find eve he never said eve where are you it's god that said adam where are you satan always knows where to find them i know where frail human beings can be found let me tell you every man even from adam was born with the tendency to sin in iniquity jeremiah said did my mother he never said in sin remember it's iniquity that produces sin iniquity is a state of the heart the propensity to be vulnerable towards a thing that's why he said um, subdue replenish he used the word subdue in other words be careful there is a stranger i don't want to tell you his story but don't be surprised if you find out you are not alone in this garden and then satan came you think he came to eve one day no he had been coming Ah, Eve, so you are here today. He said, don't disturb me. God is coming in the cool of the day. He said, okay, let's talk Eve. Satan's deception is so powerful. Remains small. He would have gotten Jesus. Read your Bible. <laughs> Satan for you. When Satan took Jesus up the mountain, he tempted it on, him on three things that, re, that represent the dimensions for spiritual growth. The first dimension was your personal need. That's where the temptation started from. Jesus, you are hungry. Remember, part of the supplies of the powers of heaven is to help you satisfy your personal need. So Satan, I mean Jesus, don't watch stones like this where you are dying of hunger. The power of God is able to turn stones into bread. Do it. And Jesus said no. And Satan found out, okay, I see you are so obsessed with your assignment. You have left the realm of your individualism into kingdom. Next temptation let's talk about the issues now that concern the agenda of god 
why route it the hard way all the kings that are in these systems i deceive them and place them there they are my boys bow to me and let me just give you their heart instead of routing through the cross and all this pain are you seeing satan now he left jesus for a season he said i'm coming notice he never came directly to jesus again satan for you the next time we see satan coming he's coming to peter remember the goal is to jesus then the next time we see him again judas then the next time in jesus's weakness he now comes and manipulates his mind and jesus for the first time says father is it possible that you take this cup off me and jesus said no nevertheless nevertheless not my way if jesus prayed that prayer the father would have granted him yes because he always hears me jesus said it at the grave of lazarus i thank thee father because you always hear me i ha i had to pray this in open so that they will know i'm not my my open prayer is not an act of unbelief i'm saying it to minister to them i thank thee because you always hear me if jesus stopped at that prayer the father would have said well i cannot be a demon to usurp your will you have chosen to abort redemption so let it be and that would be it he still will be the word but there is no longer fruits of redemption he will still remain till today as the firstborn of the begotten but thank god he endured and he has now become not just the only begotten but the first begotten of the father we being the proceeds of that salvation and the bible says that we have now been called into glory and virtue are we together deception the third way deception can happen ephesians 5 verse 6 god we have to run we have to run at least let's let's just stop somewhere here and then we'll pray let no man deceive you with what help me so the third instrument of deception is vain words you can use words that may look very spiritual expressions theologies spiritual communications that because they are deep and because they are voluminous in context and play around with your mind they may be termed weighty just because of the nature of them the bible says let no man deceive you with vain words so who are the people that bring this kind of deception men satan uses men to bring vain words just because a thing is spiritual does not mean it is accurate i can bring something and communicate what we call deep mysteries and in the end of it you are bamboozed by my theological dissertation but there is no substance in it to bring you victory we have to be careful let no man deceive you with vain words for because of this cometh the wrath of god on the children of disobedience the first level of satanic influence and hear me brothers and sisters for as long as you are in this earth you stand a chance to be deceived there must be a groundedness in the world that immunes you from deception the cure for deception among other things is to be sound in the world are we together now that the word of god is able to establish you the bible declares that i commend you to the word of his grace that is able to make you wise and then to give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified so the word of god is able to give us wisdom wisdom number two the second level of satanic influence is called manipulation and control manipulation and control the first realm the realm of deception thrives on the strength of your senses you may want to write that satan plays around with your senses and the fact that you are human and that you process things through your five senses it becomes his advantage number two is manipulation and control this happens in the realm of the mind this is where strongholds are this is where all kinds of thoughts that are captive that keep men subject to the laws of satan like we shared in luke 22 give us luke 22 and verse 31 this was the encounter that jesus had with peter 
remember Luke 22 the Lord said to Simon watch this Simon remember was a disciple of Jesus although they had not experienced salvation in as much as we know but the fact that they were in close touch with the Word of God alone should create some system of immunity yet Satan penetrated all of that and came again through Simon the chiefest of the Apostles are we together he was forbidding Jesus that Jesus should not talk about death no Jesus don't talk about the cross and everything and Jesus was said oh Simon you love me so much you are such a kind man Jesus looked at him and said no this is not kindness this is this is the devil wants to use he's taking advantage now watch this are you seeing how manipulation and control happens it takes advantage of an attribute within you that may even be godly and Satan can buy into it to become what you if you have compassion Satan can use compassion to deceive you if you have intelligence Satan can use your intelligence and overthrow you here he takes advantage of Peter's compassion Peter thought he was being sympathetic to Jesus Jesus you've done too much don't talk about death I'm going to miss you what does a good leader do oh I, I, you guys are all wicked people I'm talking of dying and none of you is crying Peter come I love you in fact when I when, when as I'm going to heaven you will receive my mantle for being this compassionate hear what Jesus says Jesus looks at Peter with the tears running from his eyes and says get thee behind me this is Jesus why didn't he look at the ground get no 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 he looks at Peter get thee behind me Simon Simon he said Satan had desired to do what have you that he may sift you as wheat next verse but I have prayed for you so what is one of the secrets that can help you overcome demonic manipulation is the ministry of prayer he said watch and pray that you do not fall into temptation because you can't judge it just by the seeing of the eye you need to sustain an intelligence and a capacity to discern between good and evil I have prayed for thee that thy faith fail not and when thou art converted he say use this same formula to strengthen your brethren that means intercede for them too because Satan will come are you seeing why intercession is important in a church for the saints Paul was praying that we we pray that that um, um, prayers and supplications be offered for those in government for this and that that we may live a peaceable and a quiet life if you don't pray Satan will sway people manipulation the realm of the mind now this is where it looks as though believers are possessed are we together because you see when you are I, I don't want to go into deliverance proper now that that's for series three are we together but you notice even here in koinonia and even you know right now as I've been talking you are seeing believers that you know love God but in the pro they themselves are shocked all of a sudden they start crying and talking things and saying things and you look at them and it's ah, but this person is a believer why is this person suddenly crying out and your spirit is leaving the person the physical manifestation of deliverance from whatever level looks the same it takes the eye of the spirit to know what is happening there so be careful so you don't blackmail believers and all of a sudden you see a mecca now standing and i touch his head and he's manifesting i says you see this guy these, these, these are the snakes that are singing in, in koinonia no no that kind of talk is is ignorance and arrogance and even stupidity sometimes don't blackmail believers just because of this and again we prophets and apostles i think we must be warned in jesus name because we are the ones who advocate this confusion just because you look and see a snake you just stand up and the guy now gets up and he's angry he knows he's not a snake he knows he's not a fool he loves god with all his heart he's surprised that he was manifesting and he's ashamed and he he goes back stigmatized by others who felt they didn't fall so that means they are sound not knowing the acuteness of the problem that is sitting on your head are we together god bless you 
so the realm of the mind manipulation and control this is where satan sways our thoughts ah. it is manipulation and control is so powerful it will shock you to know that the greatest victims of this realm are believers not unbelievers unbelievers are so flexible the sincerity of their heart doesn't even it allows them to find truth it is believers that are quick to look at men of god apostle joshua selman how can a young man like that have crowd like be careful lord we are in the end times and you will think you are being sincere are we together now manipulation it is the devil that uses that realm to make somebody you love so much he now uses his face to you in a dream watch this somebody that loves you and is praying for you maybe your mother now appears and you go and say apostle prophet i saw my mother with a knife and he said i've been telling you for ages your mother is a witch and all of a sudden you carry axe and straight to your village and your mother said oh my dad so don't tell me anything so you are the one behind my pain manipulation both the counselor and the counselee both of them are under the siege of manipulation and control are we together now very important satan can manipulate you the moment he sees that you are get you are praying over a challenge in your life and he has seen that you have dedicated time to seek the lord he withdraws that challenge temporarily so that you will stop praying you will take you will take the withdrawal to be victory established then you will now say because he knows that you never see god until there is trouble so the moment there is a challenge and you set yourself to seek the lord you will see a temporary victory and you say ah that's it the dream has stopped and so you continue in that low level and think you are safe Whereas he's waiting for a time where you go so down that he can strike you in a way that will matter. Is God giving us intelligence tonight? Manipulation. Do you know, brothers and sisters, I look at my own life. Let me be honest with you. I look at my own life. I look at my background. And brothers and sisters, I'm shocked at how well-meaning my life was and how satan prevailed over my mind with doctrines with theories with all kinds of things it's amazing sometimes i sit down and i listen to men of god sometimes i attend conferences and i see people and i see very well-meaning believers but i am afraid sometimes even very anointed i am surprised at how they are victims to the siege of manipulations the very context of their doctrine will tell you that they are under manipulation there are all kinds of manipulations if i get up today for instance as a man of god and i believe that every other church and every other ministry in zaria is wasting god's time except me that state is already a sign of progress in an attack are you getting what i'm saying if i believe that i'm the most anointed man of god in zaria and that every other person especially our fathers our reverence here and there they are just talkatives wasting god's time the fact that i could accept that imagination why do the hidden rage and the people imagine a vain thing that i could conceive that vanity and agree in my heart and convince myself that that is the state is already a sign that i'm a victim of manipulation and control are you getting what i'm saying now dishonor to the body is a product of this kind of attack dishonor to constituted authority we are all men of god there's nothing you have that I don't have. It's a sign of this level of attack. Listen very carefully. The pride that comes with the result of spirituality is a product of this. You will not know. Oh, I come and I say, look, I've, I've fasted for 40 days. Mr. Man, how long do you fast? He said, well, I managed to do two. Like <laughs> love is like, this guy. Still, I pray that God will bring you up. Oh, I'm going to go and pray. And you think that just because you did that is a show of spirituality. It could be 
that the devil is already wasting such an energetic spiritual process that should bless you but it's been corrupted by allowing him to prevail over your mind then on the other hand you see people praying and fasting and you look at them and say look all you guys need you see you see wisdom is profitable to direct this prayer prayer is, is all nonsense you are just praying stupid that state too is another version of manipulation are you getting the point now yes the fact that you use financial prosperity only as the chief proof of the word of god working for you is big deception i'm repeating this thing again I believe in prosperity we've taught a lot on success systems but learn this I think the church of the Lord Jesus Christ needs to be weaned away from the deception that prosperity alone is proof that things are going on well in your life in terms of financial abundance no remember that the harlot upon the horse that mystery Babylon can enrich the kings of the earth she's a merchant she can make men rich so just because i'm adding spiritual value to you and you sow into my life and then you come and see me taking tea and bread you can mistaking the availability of a lot of tea and bread to mean that just because i have tea and bread my life is all right it's impossible for me to be under any kind of siege and i myself can be deceived because the moment I want to think about my life, an alert comes. One million. Rabba. That means this thing is in place. If it was not in place, I mean, where did the devil stop it from the bank? Let's be very careful. A man's life does not constitute in the abundance of what he has. I'm not against abundance now. I hate poverty. We all do as a ministry. Are we together? But at the same time, we must be careful. There are many people whose lives are not all right. Just because they have a lot of money, they just turn and look at other poor. It's easy for a poor man to believe he's oppressed. Even if he's free, he will not agree. Because the whiplash of the, uh, what they call, the economic tide that is swaying him left and right, even when he has been delivered, there is still something that is obvious and real and truthful when someone does not eat it's easy that's why sociologists will tell us that religion is the opium of the masses it's a system to motivate masses to keep them in bondage are we together manipulation and control number three find somewhere to stop here tonight is complete possession that means complete possession of your spirit your soul your body the entirety of your tripartite nature can come under the subjection of darkness this is called possession the bible shows us people who were under that kind of thing mark chapter 5 the madman in gadara do you know why he was a madman in fact he was not even a madman we only call him mad simply because of the context of our civilization. The goal of the demons was not to make him mad. They were just too many in one person. And so his activity looked like that of somebody who is insane. The goal was not insanity. How could you have a legion of demons and be all right based on men's context of civilization? Imagine the war. This one is saying, cut this stone. And so he just remained. And notice how restful he was. The Bible says he will sit down in a cave quietly. They came over onto the other side of the sea, into the country of the gatherings. It's a long reading. We'll find somewhere to stop. Verse 2. Let's continue. And when he was come out of the ship, listen carefully, immediately there met out of the tombs a man with what? You see that was not a madman. It was just a man with too many unclean spirits a man with an unclean spirit verse 3 who had his dwellings among the tombs and no man could bind him no not with chains a man with flesh and blood yet metallic chains could not hold him because that he had often bound with fetters and chains and the chains had been plucked asunder by him 
and the fetters broken in pieces neither could any man tame him verse 5 okay and always night and day he was in the mountains and in the tombs crying and cutting himself with stone six but when he saw Jesus afar off he ran and worshiped him now you would think that worship is homage no this is Satan at work deception this let me tell you this when Satan knows you will overpower him his next assignment becomes to agree with you so that he will conquer you remember in the book of Acts these are the holy men of God they have come to preach the glad tidings of the kingdom so that the day Paul goes will say since we can't see Paul we know that you are allies in ministry and the deception will continue be careful when the devil starts fraternizing with you it's a sign to allow that comfort to keep you there so that you will be struck eventually but when he saw Jesus he ran and worshipped him verse 6 and he cried out with a loud voice and said what have I to do with thee Jesus thou son of the most high God I adjure thee by God Satan speaking through a man i adjure thee by god that thou torment me not eight oh dear i'm sorry mark is not giving us the context i'm looking for anyway we'll read to verse 9 and just stop there one of the synoptics that talks about the legions i thought that was where it will lead us for he said unto him come out of the man thou unclean spirit mark gave us an epistle of one spirit but we know i think um ah okay mark leaves it there too and he asks him what is thy name identify yourself now there has been a debate about this i don't i'll talk about it next week talking to demons talking back to you we'll address it don't worry trust me my name is joshua selman justice will be done adequately are we together now and he asks him what is thy name and he answered saying my name is is that a name my name is what legion suddenly he now changes from i to we we are many don't be deceived that only one person is speaking we are many multiple spirits can exist within the same entity strange so your human spirit is not the only one that can be in you another spirit many spirits legions we are many verse 10 and he besought him much that he would not send them away from the country this is another discussion how can demons beg and say okay apostle cast us out of here but let's not go outside of new extension we have been in new extension for a long time look at the level of organization that the demonic kingdom have they know that there is jurisdiction of their influence and saying if you take us out of that jurisdiction there is no basis for dominion so leave us within our prescribed territory we will leave the individual you are interested in but leave the territory this is a message that many of us need to learn so it can leave you but is still around you waiting for a moment when you will grant access again Jesus is the one teaching that when a demon leaves a man so demons can leave men let it not surprise you that demons leave men the Bible says he goes through arid regions and not finding any place of habitation it will tell itself I will return back to my house you are born again he's still calling you his house you see how tenacious Satan is my house and he comes and finds it swept clean but empty then it doesn't enter alone it gathers seven greater than itself look at that system of coordination seven greater than itself and returns and they comfortably stay in you so that the end of that man is even worse don't miss the next part three of this i will be teaching you why many supposed deliverance is incomplete and i'll be teaching you the imbalance of forever continuous deliverance why is it that you keep casting out the same demon forever you know because this is I, i'm already going ahead of myself i want to solve that problem there are many well-meaning believers who teach 
that deliverance is an ongoing continuous and forever process in a way they are right and in a way they are wrong when i teach you the dimensions of deliverance we will see what deliverance is ongoing and what deliverance is wrong the deliverance of transformation because there is a dimension of deliverance called transformation it is an ongoing process christ being the standard on, and the reference so in that way it is correct but deliverance like a continual exorcism casting away of spirit beings the fact that they continue finding expression is a sign that what that person needs is not just to cast the demons away are you getting me now all of that we're going to deal with next week we have to find a place to tie it today levels of satanic influence number one deception we're just doing a recap number two manipulation and control number three complete possession look up please of all these three levels the only one that the saints are by the default state of redemption immune from are we together is complete possession because he that is joined to Christ according to the authority of scripture is one spirit not two spirits living in one the same way a husband and a wife have become one are we together now you have become one it's a sharing together to understand that concept you have to understand an old Jewish practice called salt covenant uh, the salt covenant was a way of binding um, union between two people or two neighboring countries and they would use salt are we together you would bring your salt i will bring my salt and we'll pour it together in a vessel and mix it the condition for us to close that covenant is if everyone can pick his own salt out are we together so our redemption is in the similitude of that kind complete possession by the authority of scripture i do not believe that a believer can be completely possessed spirit soul and body although we generally call it possession simply because of the character of the manifestation are you getting where the error comes from now so like i said if i pray we're going to start praying shortly and many of you even as you are listening to me now will find out that you start manifesting and sometimes in the manifestation you will say things and do things that many times can look like you are possessed are we together and if you do not discern with understanding you may even deceive yourself to think you are possessed i've seen many people join the line after koinonia and then they ask me apostle am i a witch i said what is the meaning of that he said please i'm tired of everybody around saying i'm a witch even a witch listen carefully even a witch is not entirely possessed hmm. you see that that thing we call witch and wizards no There are spirit entities that are not human. Listen very carefully. I hope you know that human beings are not the only species of beings on earth. We know that, right? That there are other species. Make reference to my message, the, the seed, I think the seed and the woman also, are seven days prayer and fasting. I did a little teaching on that. That there are human beings on earth that are not pure humans. The salvation is not for them they cannot access the redemptive work of Jesus otherwise probably the angels would have re repented salvation is not for angels salvation is not for any other beings in fact in fact listen very carefully the scope of salvation starts as as far as the authority of scripture reveals to us starts from the Adam the man who originated our human civilization if you were before adam there was another system are we together it was not redemption through the blood of the eternal son of god because when according to apostle peter when jesus went to hell the ones he preached to were not those who were at the pre-adamites we know that by those who resurrected with him are we together now the bible says prophets of old that resurrected and walked the streets of jerusalem then having ascended to the father as the firstborn of the begotten to finish the substitutionary sacrifice there the atonement he now came and they all went together 
are we together now so we know that it is true that that uh, apostle peter lets us know that jesus preached the gospel to the departed saints in hell there because they were partakers but if you were not of adam that's why jesus is called the second adam so it starts from there there are other beings on earth that cannot be partakers of salvation but they are on earth satan has fraternized with them and he's still using them are you getting what i'm saying now so you can find some of these entities the fact that they are not of this earth does not mean that they cannot find expression in materials but material bodies and then you will also see them manifest in material bodies i'm not talking of entering a human being they themselves as an entity sustaining a body that is material but it's not a human being those are the kinds that we that's the classic proof of wizardry are we together now it's not just an individual who has been possessed there is a dimension of that but there are beings on earth that you see they are humanoid in their context but they are not human beings they are not progenitors from from adam salvation they can't receive salvation it is this kind that the bible says spare not a witch to live You will be blessed with a lot of balance um, I'm there's something I, I want to reserve it till part three because as I just said that thing, many of you now are afraid okay so if they don't leave you are trying to say they die so what does that mean because many of you have seen ministries uh, respectfully great ministries like mountain of fire and all of that sometimes you see them say die and then you're now saying so what is it and men of god have laughed in sarcasm to mean spirits don't die we will find out how spirits die because spirits die <laughs> hmm. jesus the greatest strength of satan the one factor that makes satan look powerful over lives is one word the flesh write it down the flesh next or next week or whenever is the next time we'll take it we'll start from there the flesh i have to stop now no matter what level of deliverance you go through every other agency of demonic activity is dependent on the strength of the flesh to walk meaning you are truly not free when you are still alive to the flesh are we together now this is where the burden of laborious continual deliverance in in futility comes from an attempt to continue to cast out spirits cast out spirits cast out spirits and then the saints or the individuals that are now delivered continue to remain and dwell in the domain of the flesh let me tell you when you dwell in the domain of the flesh you will get to a point where the spirits on their own can go without being casted out and come because the gateway a stronghold has been created by your affinity to the flesh and that's why sometimes they mock we men of god before you say in jesus name they have gone and the person is happy i say hey, to mean you are powerful and is waiting he knows so people continue receiving temporary results temporary breakthrough temporary deliverance temporary this but there is a way that god can grant us grace to establish victory once and for all that you win today and win tomorrow you stand strong today and stand strong tomorrow then you now will not be the person in need of deliverance you will carry this dimension because you will now you will know you are delivered because you are a possessor it remains with you are we together so now you can turn to others and begin to communicate the dimension of the life and the power that god has brought to you are we blessed rise up on your feet rise up please you reign you reign hello king you reign you reign
Jesus, I'm walking in the experience of the victory, the victory that the blood of Jesus, the victory that the blood of Jesus, the victory that the death of Jesus, the victory of his triumphant resurrection. Lift your voice and declare. Never will it become a prophetic reality. It is becoming my experience. Victory over generational curses. Victory over yokes and bondages. next time we're doing deliverance and I'll be teaching you on all of the elements but one of the mysteries that produce true deliverance is the mystery of the blood are we together it's one of the three witnesses the Bible says and there are three witnesses that bear three that bear witness in heaven the father the word and the spirit it says that there are three witnesses this is where the problem is the earth it says the spirit, the water, and the blood. Are we together? The Bible guarantees us that the blood of Jesus speaketh. The blood of Jesus speaketh. That means you can cause the blood to advocate. The blood of Jesus is an advocate. There is the advocacy ministry of the blood. The same way Cain killed Abel. Abel, the man, had died. But Abel the blood was speaking and he cried and God himself had to say no something is happening although the man had died but the blood is still speaking I'd like you to engage the blood and say in the name of Jesus I declare that I'm a partaker of the ministry of the blood I invoke the advocacy of the blood open your mouth and speak open your mouth and speak over every pattern, over every curse, over every yoke. And when I see the blood, I will pass over. And when I see the blood, I will pass over. And when I see the blood, I will pass over. When I see the blood upon your life, upon your family, when I see the blood upon every ordinance against you, I will pass over. When I see the blood upon the pronouncements in your family, I will pass over. Lift your voice and invoke the blood. We declare that the blood speaks. Declare the mystery of God's mercy. The blood speaks. We declare the priesthood of Jesus that is after the order of Melchizedek. 
higher than the Aaronic priesthood. Higher than the priesthood of Noah. We declare in the name of Jesus. Shabakato Sabarata. The blood speaks. The blood speaks over the ordinance of our fathers. The blood speaks. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Help that lady, please. The Bible says, listen carefully. Just help those under the anointing. Something is happening here. The Bible says we have been called out of every tribe, out of every tongue. Remember, I'll be sharing with you. Every other power on earth cannot walk without the sun. The sun and the moon are the two elements that power every activity that happens on the earth. That's why the psalmist said the sun shall not smite you. The sun does not smite in itself. But I can take advantage of the sun. Every activity demonically on earth. Without the, when there was darkness upon the earth, there was no demonic activity. Until light returned, then Satan now returned with his activity too. When there was, all through the period of darkness, the only entity we see is the Spirit of God. We never hear of any demon jumping. The moment the sun was withdrawn, and the moon was withdrawn, so the psalmist said, the sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. Witchcraft cries only with the sun. That's why Jesus himself is called the son of righteousness that can arise with healing. Thou shall not be. He said the son shall not smite you. That means for as long as there is sun and there is moon, I can do something on earth that will tap the power of the sun to fight you. That will tap the power of the sun to spare you away. Watch this. Hold on. Joseph goes to bed and has a dream. And here's his dream. I saw the sun. I saw the moon. And I saw 11 stars. Remember all of them are lights. They are just different kinds of light. Bowing to me. When Jacob had this. Jacob said so. Me. Jacob called himself the sun. So I will bow. And my wife who gets her glory from me like the moon from the sun and then your brothers who are also stars will bow to you Jacob was worried the sun bowing the sun can bow the moon can bow even the stars that have been sent to signify times and seasons can bow what is this power that can make the sun bow by next week I'll share with you how God delivered me you know I've been telling you what I went through but I've not shared with you how I came out this is what I want to share with you Kai look let me tell you you don't know victory till you understand the mysteries of the spirit you will smash the gates of darkness he said he has broken the gates of brass and cut the bars of iron in thunder That you will walk through the enemy's camp and take your possession and lift it like this and turn to Satan and say I dare you I will show you a man who made the sun and the moon to obey him I'm happy his name is called Joshua Hi. <laughs> watch this watch this every time God wanted to bring redemption to men he didn't just bless them he did something to the sun and the moon to realign them to their advantage hezekiah was about to die and when god turned his life he said as a sign i will do something to the sun and move it a particular degree so that the power that would have killed you that has shifted the sun to that degree to allow it kill you will no longer be able to touch you Joshua looked at the sun and said Jericho is not an ordinary city they are fortified
because they have done something even with the sun and the moon and he said son there is war about to be fought and because of that stand still it's not just because of light sun stand still moon hold your peace and all of a sudden Jericho suddenly became afraid the diviners in Jericho said this thing is not working again they said what happened they said someone has done something to the sun Jericho was close and they were afraid the, na the nation of Israel were not fighting they are they, the Bible said they were close none went out none entered they said we're in trouble the sun and the moon you will see why herbalists do all kinds of things and drop a mirror on the ground and use a sun and or the sun and make stupid enchantments and we laugh and say oh it doesn't matter and all of a sudden you will now see why the psalmist categorized evil according to what the sun does and the night there are arrows that fly only by day the what empowers them is the sun there is the destruction that wasted in noonday once it is 12 on the dot that destruction can start please be interested in what i'm sharing because this ministry that you enjoy is standing on the wings of these mysteries there is what can subdue causes yes it is the blood of jesus yes it is all of this but the dynamics of that operation brothers and sisters the powers that hold africa are powerful don't trivialize it jesus is above all i don't in any way demean the power of god if i did i would not be standing here if i did this koinonia will not be standing here if i'm faking what i tell you i will not open my mouth to declare this because that means i won't be able to sleep this night too who can stand against the lord no one can no one will still on that exercise of night prayers I know some of you have not been doing it don't do it as a ritual but I want you to receive grace to do it with understanding forget about what happens just do what I ask you to do it doesn't matter whether even if you are praying and a demon appears. don't worry you are about to see a dimension of the wisdom and the power of God conquer the realm of the flesh are we together we are going to receive grace to pray but I want to pray for you right now please just help anyone under the anointing just two minutes and then we are done in the name of Jesus Christ I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Spirit I, my God I'm seeing a sword right now I declare every hold of darkness shabakato salata even in this series help them jesus look at what is happening there in the name of jesus you know my voice i was once your victim but tonight has come as one who has been given the keys of david by the message of god i declare right now in the name of jesus everyone here under the sound of my voice who is under any kind of siege right now be free in the name of jesus 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 
every family under any kind of siege that is mocking your Christian integrity and making God's word look like a lie in the name of Jesus fire I'm seeing fire that's what I'm seeing from heaven I'm praying for you in the spirit in the name of Jesus I cause the plague of witchcraft I cause the plague of witchcraft in the name of Jesus every voice speaking against everyone's destiny the Bible says blotting out every handwriting and every ordinance that spoke against us the bible says he nailed it to the cross i declare and i decree by the substitutionary sacrifice of the eternal begotten of the father i cause every power that is not of god in the name of jesus christ i reverse any ordinance in the spirit over every individual over every family i command a reversal now in the name of jesus and the sons of jacob shall possess their possession let me pray for you everything that must enter your hand the open doors that the blood of christ release help them please everything you have seen in the realm of the spirit God has shown you dreams that you are a possessor God has shown you dreams your children, your breakthrough your lifting, your speed, your job your marriage in the name of Jesus I release it to your hands now become a possessor I release it to your hands now become a possessor and I pray for you the Bible says when you catch a thief he won't just restore what he stole because he has wasted your time by stealing can I speak restoration let me tell you there are many of us you have lost things some you have lost time Joshua said son go back move go back I prophesy to you in the name of the Lord Jesus I prophesy as one sent in the name that is above all names everything the devil took away from you I command a restoration now I command a restoration now whatever you have lost in time i speak to you between today and friday coming i pray that someone will have the faith to believe this prayer may my god the god of jeshurun arise and surprise you arise and surprise you we call him ebenezer the helper of israel i declare oh god arise oh god arise Hallelujah. The Bible says, The rod of the wicked will not rest upon the lot of the righteous. Do you know why? Because when that pressure comes upon the righteous, the pressure will make them dip their hands in iniquity. I will share with you a mystery. It was the delay of the coming of the bridegroom that made the oil of five of the virgins to finish if the bridegroom came early all ten will be alive they all started alive but when there was delay five started going down we have to end thank you lord jesus father we bless you we bless you for the spirit of revelation 
we bless you for the abundance of what you are doing in our midst even in this season Lord Jesus we pray for tomorrow in the name of Jesus we thank you for our doctors we thank you for that which we are doing by your grace for this community Lord we pray for the worship concert on Sunday let it be such an avalanche of your glory may your glory visibly rest upon us we pray for the worship team as they lead us in worship oh god anoint them in a supernatural way we decree and declare that you will be glorified as we lift up the sounds of worship right from zaria to the nations of the earth we pray oh god that a shofar will also sound in the spirit that will bring liberation will bring healings will bring signs and wonders we give you all the glory in the name of jesus christ amen and amen let me make the altar call very quickly please keep standing you heard me say the only way to be free from possession is when your spirit is joined to the spirit of the christ the bible says and whoever does not have the spirit is none of his there are people here you probably are following online you're here in the main auditorium you may be a visitor overflow one overflow two overflow three and by the roadside wherever i want to give you an opportunity we're not playing games this is very serious business there are people here saying apostle i love the things of god but i've never formally handed my life over to christ and others are saying i at one point or the other gave my life to jesus but because of the pressures like i said the delay of the coming of the bridegroom caused even the oil of the five virgins to finish and it caused them to begin to slumber until they missed it you may be in that category whichever of the two you are in i want to give you an opportunity now hallelujah if you are in overflow one overflow two and the main auditorium i will request that you come out and just stand here as i pray with you if you are at overflow three for the sake of time and distance may i request that you just move to the front of your projector screen and just follow me as i lead the saints um, in this prayer god bless you you are here make your way to the front let's appreciate them as they come some of you it is your coming that will culminate to the salvation of your family members don't take it for granted you are not just coming for yourself alone your redemption is the redemption of your family he said as for me and my house it has to be me first before my house it can be my house before me god bless you koinonia celebrate them as they come jesus is drawing many to the fold thank you jesus tonight win that war in your hearts there's nothing to be ashamed of he said ye must be born again it's not just a religious initiation into a church into a whatever it is no it is the foundation for a solid work with god someone may be thinking about it and say apostle i'm not sure i'm bad i don't do anything bad as as much as i know i'm just not sure i've handed my life to jesus join them join them when the titanic sank there were only two names those who were saved and lost if you were not sure you were saved you were lost as simple as that there's no hanging around the fence you are either fully completely and consciously in christ or you are outside of christ is there someone saying i'm in this category i want to join them make your way very quickly and join them as i lead them in this prayer if there's anyone please join them very quickly thank you brothers and sisters for this noble decision lift your right hand and i want you to say this after me convincingly let this be from the depth of your heart you are not just reciting a poem after a man of god let it be from the depth of your heart jesus is in this place say after me lord jesus say it again lord jesus i believe in you that you are the son of god tonight i have heard your word and i declare that jesus is my savior that jesus is my lord now and forever i receive eternal life i receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness and i declare 
that I reign in life. I declare that I'm a child of God and I begin to walk in victory. Amen. God bless you. Jesus, thank you for these precious brothers and sisters in here, online, and at the overflow outside. I declare that you receive these ones and that they receive of the gift of your spirit. And I pray that beginning from today, they are declared the righteousness of God and they begin to walk in the full expression of all that redemption has made available. We give you all the things. I declare your sins forgiven. I declare the power of the flesh, the power of Satan in the name of Jesus broken over your life. I set you free and I declare that you begin to walk in victory. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. A big congratulations to you. Please follow the gentleman waving his hands. All of you in concert, follow the gentleman waving your hands and there will be a group of people to welcome you on our behalf. Hallelujah. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salmon. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him, that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here. Don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing, keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing Jesus. I'll see you again. Bye.